What's up Chaos Shinobi here if you enjoy the story like and subscribe so I can make more awesome videos for you guys Chapter 1 To become a monster Naruto sobbed as he sat atop of his one safe place, having been ignored by his parents so that they could train his sister Naruko, who they claimed to be the child of prophecy ever since the night of the QB attack when the Sandame Hukage had sacrificed himself to seal the giant fox inside of his sister, his father and mother doted on the girl always saying that she needed to be ready for the decisive days when she would change the world. This led to Naruto being ignored by not only his parents but by just about everyone. A few hours earlier he had gone to his father and asked if he would help him with his academy jutsu practice, but the older blonde had told him no, saying that he was going to be taking Naruko out to train and work on some more jutsu. His mother had also said that she would be going with and just brushed off Naruto. Why do they always ignore me? He sobbed. Who does? A voice asked from behind him. Jumping Naruto turned to see a person standing there wearing all black, with an orange mask with only a single eye opening on the left side of the mask. My parents. Naruto stated cautiously. The person nodded as he walked over and sat next to the blonde. I see. You're Naruto aren't you? He asked, causing him to nod I know about you. I've been keeping an eye on the Yandame for some time now, and I see how he and Kashina treat you. It isn't fair is it? No. Why do they always pay attention to Naruko? Because they have made a mistake in thinking that she will one day change the world. The man replied but I think they are wrong. You do? Yes. I think that you are the special one. You don't have any of those gifts that she does. Yet you work so hard and try your best in everything. That is something special that should be embraced by everyone. Not ignored for some girl that has a demon inside of her. What demon? Naruto asked. The man then told him about the attack of the Kyuubi and how Naruko was the one to have the demon sealed inside of her. But just because she has some extra help doesn't mean that she is the child of prophecy. The man stated. I guess. Naruto muttered. Tell me Naruto. Do you know the story of the wolves and fox? He asked. No. The story goes that there was a small and clever fox that got trapped by a pack of big strong wolves. These wolves made the fox hunt for them and bring them food, making them start to get lazy while the fox got stronger and stronger. It took some time but soon the fox was able to escape from the wolves that had gotten fat and lazy while the fox was now strong and fast. The moral of the story is that if you work hard you can do anything. Wow. I want to be like that fox. Naruto smiled. Maybe you can be little fox. Tomorrow is the festival for the QB's defeat and the birthday party for your sister right? Yeah it is. Naruto nodded. Come back here tomorrow night and I will help you escape this den of wolves. The man promised come back here tomorrow and I will help you get strong. Come back here tomorrow and I will care for you from now on. Naruto started to smile and nodded his agreement. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow night. Um, Toby. Toby nodded as the blonde nodded his agreement and ran off from the top of the monument back to his home while Toby watched knowing that what had just set in motion would change the entire world. That night Naruto began his packing, getting what gear he was going to need in order to leave and make sure that he would be able to survive. As he planned he decided that since he was leaving he might as well take something useful from his parents, as a final way of sticking his nose up at them for the way they had treated him. The next day his parents and his sister went out to do some shopping for the party, leaving Naruto alone just like he had wanted. He soon had the lock picked on the family library and grabbed the scroll of sealing that Minato had made and only let Kashina and Naruko look at. Naruto however had watched his father go into the scroll countless times and made sure to disable the security seal on it and then placed it by his pack. He then went to the armory where he started taking several of the weapons including his mother's sword Aka Ripa Red Ripper and making sure to remove his father's hyration seal from all of the items. Once he was packed he waited until dusk when the party was in full swing and he was sure no one would notice him missing. Naruto slipped away into the darkness with the only one noticing that he had left at all was a young heiress to the Hyuga clan. There you are, Toby stated as he saw Naruto approach carrying a large pack with various items including a large scroll and a blood red katana. I see you brought some things. Just some stuff to help make me stronger or to live with. Naruto replied with a large grin. Toby nodded and motioned for Naruto to follow him as they started to walk. By the time Toby agreed to stop it was dawn and they were quite the distance away from Kondo Hegekir no Sato. Now I'm going to tell you a few things while we rest. Toby began as Naruto nodded 
What we are going to do is head for a group of people that I have been gathering called the Akatsuki. There we can start training you and make you stronger. Are the Akatsuki strong? Naruto asked. All of them are as rank. Toby promised and one of them has eyes that were once the same eyes that the Rakuto Senen had. Naruto's eyes widened at this and he waited for Toby to continue. We have plenty of very strong people that will train you and this way you will never be looked down on by anyone. Naruto had stars in his eyes as he listened to Toby and soon his master friend told him it was time to get going again. It was several hours past dawn when Minato finally noticed that Naruto was missing. Kashina, have you seen Naruto? He shouted. No. She shouted back. I haven't seen him since last night. Minato frowned at this. He didn't spend much time with the blonde, but he always at least saw his son at some point during the day. He walked up to his room and opened the door to see that the bed was made and that there was very little sign that he was ever in this room. Minato searched around the house for Naruto but after not finding him he decided that he must have gone over to a friend's house. A few hours later he went to the library to look through his scroll and decide what to work on next with Naruko when he saw that it was gone. Kashina. He shouted as he found his wife someone has taken the scroll of ceiling. Kashina's eyes were widened at this and they next went to the armory where they found that Akaripa was gone as well. They soon had an ANBU squad searching the village for the possible perpetrator and any sign as to where the items had gone, but to no avail. That night they realized that Naruto was gone as well. They searched for him throughout the village but found that there was no sign of him. Minato had no choice then but to gather the ANBU and have them spread the search beyond Kanaya's borders. Search the area. The entire border of Hai no Kuni. Find Naruto and bring him back. He may have been kidnapped by an enemy village. Odds are that they also took the items that we have found missing from my household as well. Minato ordered. Hai Hakagasama. The ANB you nodded as disappeared. However by this time Naruto and Toby were already over the border and entering Ain no Kuni. The blonde was shocked by the constant rain that the country had and was shocked at how much water there was. Soon Toby led him to a group of three people. One was a man with orange hair and black piercings sticking out of his face. His eyes were purple ripples and he seemed odd to Naruto. The next was a blue-haired woman who had an origami flower in her hair and looked at Naruto cautiously. The last was the most unusual of the three. He looked like he was being eaten by a Venus flytrap and his body was half white and the other half black. The black half had a completely yellow eye and no mouth while the white one had a green eye and a visible mouth. Naruto. Meet the people that will be helping to look after you while I am away. Toby explained the orange-haired man is the vessel for the true man with the Rinnegan, Nagato. The man nodded calmly the young lady is his friend Kanan. And the last is Zitsu, a literal split personality. Cool. Naruto grinned as Zitsu just chuckled, in two different voices. Why have you brought him here Toby? Kanan asked. He is going to be a valuable assist one day. This is the true child of prophecy. Toby replied. Is he now? Nagato asked calmly. What makes you so sure? Call it a hunch. Toby replied like my hunch about how things would play out here a long time ago. Nagato simply nodded and Zitsu spoke up. So what can he do? The white one asked. Is he strong? The black half continued. He has potential, and he brought with him some very interesting items. Toby smirked as Naruto set down the scroll and the katana. Those are items from Kano Hegekure. Kano noted they belong to the Hukage and his wife. And he is their ignored son. Toby replied. I see. Then you are Naruto Uzumaki Namakaze. A distant relation. Nagato noted I too am from the Uzumaki clan. So we're related? Naruto asked with a grin. We are. I will help you train and be strong as well cousin. Nagato promised. I will too. Kanan smiled as she looked at him. He he will be quite powerful when he gets older. I guess I can help too. Of course we will help. Excellent. Now Naruto, you need to do what they say. I have important things to do and people to recruit. Nagato, get Kisame to help him learn Kenjutsu. Might as well help him learn to use what he took. Toby ordered. I will inform him. Nagato nodded as Toby looked at Naruto. Now you be a good boy for them and I will see you again soon. Toby promised. Okay. Naruto nodded as Toby turned and left while Kana kneeled next to him, placing a comforting hand on his shoulder. Come on. You must be exhausted. Let's find you a room and you can get some sleep. Tomorrow we will see what you can do and help you be strong. Kanan promised. Right. Naruto grinned as he followed the three into aim. The next day Nagato and Kanan took Naruto to a training ground where they had him do various exercises and had him perform every jutsu that he had learned. It wasn't much but he proved to be at the average level. We have a lot of work to do. Nagato stated as he took out a scroll and handed it to Naruto. I want you to learn the jutsu from here every month. The first few are easy, 
but they get progressively harder. Also, since you cannot seem to use a standard bunshin I want you to go into the scroll of ceiling and learn the cage bunshin. This will serve multiple purposes. Got it Nagato sensei. Naruto nodded. Okay Naruto. I'm going to be helping you learn the knowledge aspect of being a shinobi. Kanan explained because you can't just be all brawn with no brains. Right. Naruto nodded as Kanan had him sit while she started with various practical aspects of being a shinobi and different bits of knowledge that he would need. Naruto found that his was rather difficult for him at times but Kanan was a patient teacher and wouldn't move on to the next subject until he had learned what she had wanted him to. Once they finished they stood up and saw that there was a blue-skinned man approaching that looked like a shark, carrying a massive bandaged up sword on his back, along with two practice swords. So this is the brat that he wants me to train? He asked. This is him. Nagato nodded Naruto. This is Kisame. Your Kenjutsu instructor. Nice to meet you. Naruto bowed. Yeah, yeah. Kisame chuckled as he tossed him the practice blade. Let's see what you got. Naruto held the blade like he had seen his mother hold it when teaching Naruko and moved forward, swinging the blade at Kisame who blocked it easily enough but let Naruto continue the barrage of attacks and smirked that someone who had only seen this much and had never actually done any training himself could do this well. It was a few moments before Kisame blocked another swing and then stepped forward and disarmed Naruto with a smirk. You got some talent, and you seem to have watched some good people. But here is where I start pushing you to the point where you could eventually become a swordsman of my caliber. Kisame chuckled as Naruto felt very worried. The rest of the afternoon was spent working with Kisame who worked Naruto to the bone, straight to the point where he couldn't walk and Kanan had to carry him back to his room where she laid him down on the bed and made sure that he ate some soup that she had brought to him. Is this what it's going to be like every day? Naruto asked. At first, Kanan nodded but things will get better. Really? Naruto asked. Yes. Soon you won't be so tired after training and will be able to walk back on your own, and the training will get tougher and tougher. Soon you will be a force to be reckoned with. Once you manage to complete your training, Kanan smiled. Naruto only grinned as he ate some more before falling asleep. Kanan only smiled as she tucked him in and walked out, letting the blonde rest. Back in Kanaya, Minato was worried about Naruto. He had received various reports from Anbu that Naruto was nowhere to be found and that they couldn't seem to locate him at all. What was worse was that they were no closer to figuring out which direction that he had gone in or where those valuable items had gone to either. Minato sighed as he read through another note and then walked out of the room, only to find Jiraiya waiting for him. Minato, he stated. Jiraiya sensei. Minato sighed. I heard Naruto was missing. Jiraiya stated bluntly. He is. I don't know where he went to. Minato explained. And how is that possible? He's your son. Jiraiya exclaimed. Shocking Minato you should be looking after him. I do. Minato shouted back. Is that so? Then how is it that a five-year-old boy managed to take both the scroll of ceiling and Akaripa and managed to slip away without so much as a trace? Jiraiya asked. He must have been taken. Minato stated. By who? Kiri? They are too busy fighting themselves to do that. Kumo? They haven't tried anything since you made it perfectly clear that another kidnapping would end with another war. Iwa? They're too terrified of you to even enter high no Kuni half the time. Suna? They would more likely kill the boy and leave him as a message to you. Some other small country? They would have left a ransom. Jiraiya listed off it's more likely that he ran off while you focused so much on Naruko. Minato blinked at this and was about to respond when Jiraiya cut him off. I've been back for a few days now and I've seen how you treat Naruto. You completely ignore him so you can train your daughter. It sickens me to see the way you treated your son, the way you ignored the boy you named after the character from my first book. You have disappointed me Minato. Minato now looked down in shame as he realized the truth of his teacher's words. He had focused so much on Naruko, thinking that she was the child of destiny. But he had neglected Naruto and now it was possible that he would be unable to remedy that mistake. Do you know what has happened to him? Minato asked. No I don't. Jiraiya sighed I went to meet an informant that night and wasn't around for the party. But that is obviously when Naruto slipped away. Ask around and see who noticed him leave. You might get a lead from there. Minato nodded at this and soon had his ANB going to all the party guests to try and find out what had happened the night of the party. It didn't take long to find out that Hinata had seen Naruto. Naruto leave, heading towards the Huckage Monument, and he soon had a tracking team up there, searching for him. They managed to find his scent and another person's as well and they were soon following the trail, 
all the way to the border where Naruto had crossed and was now beyond Minato's reach. I have failed. Minato sighed. They were soon heading back to the village where Minato would now have to tell his wife that their son had left the country and was God's new where. With God's new who. For all they knew he might be dead. Minato felt shame at his actions and knew that Kashino would as well. Knowing that they had driven their only son to run off. A year later and Naruto was now standing at the level of a genin. Having trained diligently over the months. Working hard to master all of the techniques that Nagato had given him. Kanan had also drilled more knowledge into him so he could now state different facts about different countries with ease. Along with various facts about the wars and important figures from various villages histories. Zitsu had taught Naruto about how to survive in the wilderness and the better aspects of espionage teaching the young blonde to be a sneaky bastard and learn all that his enemies did before they learned anything about him. Kisame had kept up with the kenjutsu training and now Naruto could last a few minutes in a spar against the older Nin, while still being able to walk back to his room. During this time there had been two new members joining. Kakuzu, a man that had taken interest in the blonde and helped him with his ninjutsu practices and even helped him work on his chakra control. The other was Sasori who looked like a young boy and started teaching Naruto about poisons and puppets. Sasori Sensei, I'm not very good at this. Naruto complained as he tried to work the puppet Sasori had given him. It's fun. This is a complex skill. It requires great amounts of chakra control and lots of patience. However this is also good for chakra control and teaching you how the different puppets work so you can handle a fight against any puppet master from my former village. Sasori explained as he had Naruto continue his work. During this year Naruto had seen Tobi several times and he always brought back a gift for the blonde giving him sweets sometimes, or new Kanayan shurikens. At the moment the masked man said he was going to be away for a time while he settled some unfinished business in Kano Hegekir. Naruto was worried about his friend but was certain that Tobi would be fine. It wasn't long before another person joined their group, this one recruited by Nagato. Kakuku. So you're Naruto-kun. Orokimaru laughed as he saw the blonde working on his water walking exercise. Yeah. Who are you? Naruto asked. Gripping a kunai. My name is Orokimaru. I am a new member of the Akatsuki. Leader Sama said that it would be in my best interest to train you. Orokimaru chuckled as he looked at the blonde and could easily tell his parentage. I too used to live in Kondo Hegekir no Sado. Why'd you leave? Naruto asked. I was wronged. I was denied the title of the Yandame Hukage given to your father instead. Then my former teacher had the nerve to run me out while I worked on experiments to make one stronger. Stronger? Naruto asked with a grin. Now Orokimaru had to grin as he realized that he had hooked the blonde and could now begin his experiments anew. Yes. Perhaps you might be interested in this? Orokimaru asked. Yeah. Naruto nodded as Orokimaru motioned for the blonde to follow him so that they could begin. Naruto's screams ripped through the Akatsuki base. Shocking both Kanan and Nagato who had all of his bodies heading for the source. They found Orokimaru's room and the blonde strapped to a table while being injected by something. Orokimaru Kanan shouted as she sent a storm of paper to separate the man from the young shinobi. What do you think you are doing? Helping him. Orokimaru chuckled he agreed to this experiment. Did he? Nagato's deva body asked with a glare. He did. Orokimaru promised. When the serum is done feel free to ask him. It took several minutes but finally the serum stopped and Naruto ceased screaming in pain. When he opened his eyes they had changed from the cerulean orbs to red irises with the whites now black. Kanan gasped at the change and Naruto looked at her and smiled. It's okay Kanan sensei. Orokimaru helped me get stronger. Naruto chuckled as Kanan got him down. What have you done? Nagato asked Orokimaru. A new serum. This one brings out the latent potential in the person unleashing their full strength. However I have had to add another serum that will help heal the person since this much power would shorten the lifespan and I am certain that Naruto would like to live for some time. Orokimaru chuckled I have various other serums as well that I am sure that Naruto might be interested in. I need time to recover. Naruto replied but I want more. Kanan and Nagato traded looks but knew that the blonde would not be denied. Kanan then took Naruto back to his quarters where he would rest while Kanan and Nagato informed Tobi about what had occurred. In Kondo Hegekir Minato had thrown himself into his work, his way of trying to avoid the guilt. He had never stopped looking for Naruto, and any time that a foreign diplomat gave them a mission he informed the team to keep an eye out for his son. So far there had been no word of Naruto and this was more cause for concern. Kashina had taken on the full-time role of training Naruko, 
having her work harder than her entire class and trying to forget about Naruto as well. Come on Naruko, you need to move faster than that. Kashina chided the young blonde girl. I am trying. She panted as they started again. I'm only human. You have to be more than that. Kashina reminded her you need to be the best you can possibly be. Naruko only sighed at this and they began going again. Naruko silently blamed Naruto for the recent change in her parents and she hoped that he was dead for this. She hated him for not having this grueling training thrust upon him and being trained night and day. Worse, she hated him for being able to leave and do what he wanted. A week later news reached Minato that the entire Uchiha clan had been murdered by Adachi. Minato had known that there was trouble brewing with the clan and Danzo had warned him that there might be a revolt if things didn't calm down soon. Minato had spoken with Fokaku several times and the clan had had agreed that it would not be in the best interest of the village if things didn't settle down but the hotheads in the Uchiha clan wouldn't seem to listen. Now it seems that Adachi had snapped and killed all of the except his brother Sasuke, who Minato now had under watch, to make sure he didn't hurt himself or someone tried to finish the job that Adachi had started. Tobi and Adachi soon arrived in the Akatsuki and found Naruto had undergone quite the change. The blonde had grown several inches, his eyes had changed and he was far stronger than Toby remembered him being before they left. The blonde was currently sparring with Kisame and was holding his own quite well, given the fact that Kisame wasn't going all out against the blonde. Nagato, what happened? Toby asked. Orokimaru performed experiments on Naruto. Nagato stated Naruto wanted them done, and he has changed significantly. His chakra control has stabilized and his reserves are as great as my own. His Tejutsu skills are increasing and I have both myself and Kisame sparring against him regularly, though he is now roughly equal to a Chunin in ability. His ninjutsu skills have skyrocketed as well. He is mastering ninjutsu left and right and Kakuzu and I are both running out of ninjutsu to teach him. It appears that his primary affinity is for wind, but he can use the other elements easy enough to the point where you can barely tell the difference. Genjutsu just slides right off of him and his kenjutsu is at the point where Kisame has to take him seriously sometimes to beat him. Toby blinked his one eye at the status report and reminded himself to thank Orokimaru for his. Naruto's progress shocked him but now that he had Itachi here he was certain that he could increase the blonde's training regiment twofold at least. Keep an eye on him and work him harder. I want him to be far stronger by this time next year. Toby ordered. For what purpose? Nagato asked. The village ignored the child of prophecy. I am simply turning that child into a mantra to destroy the world. Toby replied calmly as he walked away. Returning home. It has been 10 years since Naruto had left Kondo Hegekure no Sato, and the blonde had undergone many changes, both physical and mental. He was just shorter than Inochi now, having undergone quite a growth spurt and his eyes were still the red and black that they had become from Orokimaru's first experiment. He had gained many things from those tests, along with some that Toby had done as well, saying that they would help him. He had gained a healing ability equal to most Jinchuruki, a hyper-awareness of danger so he could easily dodge attacks that even he couldn't see, and a keen sense of smell and hearing. His mind had also changed quite a bit, becoming far darker than it had ever been before and he now saw most people as pawns, including the Akatsuki. Their goal to end war, or at least Nagato's goal, seemed foolish to him. Toby had a different goal he knew but he had no interest in it. The blonde was now walking through the halls, heading to meet up with Toby who had said that he had a mission for him. The blonde wore all black, with light armor on his arms and legs, meant to be used as shields against an attack, as well as on his chest and back. He also wore the Akatsuki cloak over it all. But he didn't have one of the rings as he wasn't an official member. Over the years the lineup of the Akatsuki had changed, with Orokimaru having fled and new members joining, like Didar and Haydn. At the moment they were mostly paired off, with Tobi being a shadow and Zitsu working alone. You wanted to see me? Naruto asked as he entered Tobi's room. Ah yes. You see I owed Orokimaru a favor for his work on you and he has sent me a message calling it in. Toby explained. What does he want? Naruto asked. Your help. Toby replied as he explained that Orokimaru intended to destroy Kanaha and wanted Naruto to aid him in this. And you think that this is a good idea? Naruto asked with a smirk. I don't. So I am giving you different orders. Toby chuckled as he explained Naruto's mission and then nodded for him to leave. The blonde only nodded as he went back to his room and reclaimed Akaripa, strapping the blade to his side as he left the rainy country 
soon arriving at Otogakure where Orokimaru was waiting for him. Oh Naruto-kun, I have been expecting you. He grinned. I was told that you called in your only favor left with the Akatsuki to get me here for this job of yours. Naruto remarked. Yes. But with this you can get your revenge against Kanahe as well. Orokimaru promised. He then led the boy into the underground labyrinth and to the meeting room where there were several Odo men along with Orokimaru's personal bodyguards. Now that we are all here, let us begin. Orokimaru stated as he laid out the map the Chunin exams will be beginning soon, that is our opening. As an official village I will be sending in one team. Meant to be cannon fodder for Sasuke once he awakens his cursed seal that I will place on him during the second exam. We won't begin the invasion until the third exam, when most of the village will be distracted by the finals. We have gained the support of Tsunagakure in this, and the signal to begin will be their Jinchuruki transforming in the middle of the arena. And if he doesn't make it, Naruto asked with a snort. He will. Orokimaru replied calmly he has never sustained an injury in all of his missions and he has gone on some very dangerous ones. He will destroy anyone that gets in his way. Now all of you will receive different assignments on the day of the invasion, but as of now we are in the preparation stage. And what am I to do? Naruto asked. You will be entering the exam as well. You will be a team from AIM, going through the exams. Your job is to ensure the Sasuke survives this situation so that I can claim him later. Orokimaru explained on the day of the invasion, you are free to attack what you will. Fine. I will send word back to AIM to get a background set up. Naruto replied as he walked out of the room. My lord, I do not trust him. Kimimaru warned. You would be wise not to. Orokimaru replied I only requested that he be here because he can possibly turn the tides of a bad situation. He is as strong as most members of the Akatsuki. The majority of the shinobi in the room blinked and looked at the door where the blonde had walked off. Worried as to how dangerous this blonde was. It took two days for all the information to be established but once it was Naruto went on ahead with two Hanja clones to look like his three man cell. He took on an assumed name for this exam and had made sure to leave the Akatsuki cloak behind and take the aim headband that Kanan had sent him. As he walked back into the village he felt a wave of nostalgia hit him as he let his gaze wander the familiar sights. It wasn't long before he heard a disturbance in a side street and decided to see what was happening. Happening. Turning down the street he saw a young boy being held up in the air by a Tsunagakure genin in a full body suit, with a blonde girl behind him. In front of him were two girls, one pink haired who Naruto quickly gauged as useless. The other was a blonde with long pigtails that Naruto immediately recognized. Put Kanuhimaru down. Naruko shouted at the boy. Not till I teach the shrimp some manners. The boy retorted. Kankuro. Stop it. The other girl sighed as she looked at her teammate if Gara finds out he will kill us. That's why I'll make this quick. Kankuro stated as he was about to punch Kanuhimaru. Before the fist could connect there was a short gust of wind as Naruto had moved past the two girls, caught Kankuro's fist and gripped the wrist that was holding the boy. I would put down the young boy before I lose my temper. Naruto warned as he looked at Kankuro who blinked at the eyes and remembered the report about the ass rank nin that would be working with them with those eyes. Okay, Kankuro stated as he dropped Kanuhimaru and stepped back. Good. Naruto nodded as he turned to look at the nearby tree where a redhead with a tattoo of love on his forehead and a gourd on his back stood enjoy the show. Yes. Who are you that has Aoken mother so? He asked with a monitor UFO in these exams. Naruto replied calmly I hope you can meet my expectations. Gara. The girl whispered as she stared at the teen who smirked before disappearing in a swirl of sand. Naruto only smirked as he looked at the other two soon and then who turned and quickly left. I had it under control. Naruko snarled as she glared at the newcomer. Clearly you did that. Naruto retorted as he turned and met her gaze. Shocking the two girls with his eyes. If you had then I wouldn't have stepped in. Shows what you know. Naruko sniffed. Naruko. You shouldn't pick fights, the pink-haired girl said, looking kind of scared of the new guy. I'd listen to your friend. Naruto nodded as he looked at the other girl and nodded at her, raising her total worth from completely useless to mostly useless. I don't care what you say, Sakura. This punk just barged in like he owned the place. Naruko snapped. But Sakura tried to begin. Don't both Sakura-san. This brat likes hearing herself bark. Naruto stated with a smirk as Naruko glared at him. This is supposed to be the child of prophecy. I am disappointed. Now Naruko blinked at his statement as the boy in black left them standing there. She was confused as to how he had known about that when only a handful of people even knew about the prophecy. Shaking her head she decided to keep an eye on the stranger and see how things would play out during these exams. The next day the Chunin exams began and Naruto and his two clones entered the building, 
walking past a crowd of genin caught in a genjutsu. Once on the third floor Naruto opened the doors and entered the room, moving off to the side where he could observe everyone. He spotted Orokimaru, disguised as a Kuzunin, using the same trick that Naruto had done with the cage Benshin. He then found Gara and his teammates, staring at him with worry. Finally he picked out the Odo team that were going to be sacrificed for Orokimaru's plans. Odds were that they didn't even know what was going to happen to them and Naruto made an effort to memorize each of their faces. One was completely wrapped in bandages, looking like a mummy. The next was a boy who looked like an arrogant bastard. The last was a girl that as Naruto looked her over he decided that she was rather cute. Show time. Naruko shouted as she kicked the door open and walked in like she owned the place. Naruto looked at her and her teammates and smirked at them as he saw them run a gaze over the room. When Naruko spotted the blonde with the strange eyes standing with two other people she moved towards them. But Sasuke stopped her. Don't be an idiot. Sasuke warned you pick a fight here you might get us kicked out of here. They wouldn't kick us out. Naruko retorted. Yes they would. The proctors don't like anyone starting fights before the designated area. Sasuke stated calmly and your parents can't do anything about it either. Naruko huffed angrily at this and just shot the blonde a glare. Sasuke simply shook his head and decided to speak with the person that irritated his teammates so much. Walking over he stopped in front of the blonde and looked at his strange eyes that reminded him of the Sharingan. So you're the one that pissed Naruko off so much. Sasuke stated, I am. And you must be Sasuke Uchiha. Naruto nodded, I've heard a lot about you. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. Sasuke smirked. What should I call you? Yami. Naruto replied calmly these are my teammates Aku and Tsumi. Pleasure. Sasuke nodded as he looked at the two raven haired men who only nodded so you're from AIM? Yes. Naruto nodded we're a fresh team and our sensei said that we should take these exams to see how we stack up against other genin our age. Not many genin and AIM? Not really. Naruto shrugged. The two small talked for a few more moments when a platinum blonde tackle hugged the Uchiha. Miss me Sasuke-kun? She asked as she hugged him. Get off of him Ino. Sek Kura shouted as she moved to get the girl off of her teammate. Naruto smirked at this as he saw other genin approaching. Troublesome. A pinnable hair teen sighed as he moved by Eno, with a hefty boy who was munching on a bag of chips. As lively as ever. A boy with a dog left as he and his team moved over by them. Kiba. Naruto smirked at the boy I was wondering why I smelled wet dog. Hey. Kiba shouted back at the blonde girl. Kiba. Please don't fight. The girl on his team begged as she looked at the other genin and stopped her gaze on Naruto. She frowned at him and seemed to almost recognize him. Before she could say anything a boy with glasses approached. You guys sure are noisy. He stated. And who are you? Naruko asked with frown. I'm Kabuto. A veteran of these exams you could say. He smiled. How many times have you taken it? Sakura asked. This is my eighth time. Kabuto chuckled. Man you suck. Kiba laughed. It's not that I'm bad. It's that these exams are tough, Kabuto explained but because I've been here so often I managed to gather quite a lot of information on the other competitors. Even first time competitors? Sasuke asked. Yep. Kabuto nodded. Give me the cards for Rock Lee. Subaku no Gara and Yami. Sasuke stated and Naruto smirked as he realized that Sasuke had identified him as a potential threat. Kabuto then took out the three cards and they had a picture of the person their general skills and the amount of missions that they had taken since they had become genin. Lee was an interesting case, as he had no ninjutsu or genjutsu skills but made up for having exceptional taijutsu skills. Gara had no real information except the amount of missions that he had taken and that he had never suffered a single wound on any of his missions. Lastly was Yami, whose card only had a picture of him, and everything else was blank. What's with this? Naruko exclaimed. Sorry. But AIM has closed borders so I haven't gotten any information on this guy really except some rumors that I haven't been able to confirm yet. Kabuto apologized. What rumors? The girl from Kiba's team asked. Well, those eyes aren't a Keke Genkai for starters. The next rumor is that he and his entire team are actually a lot higher in the skill department than Chunin but they haven't been given a chance to test this yet because they are new genin. The pineapple hair boy stated. Exactly. Kabuto nodded the last is that he murdered his previous team and that this one was put together at the last minute. That last one isn't true. Naruto stated calmly, shocking them the others are. 
but that last one is false. I have been with Aku and Tsum since we were made Jen in a few months ago. That's so. Kabuto nodded as he added the information to the card. Care to add anything else? No. Naruto stated as he turned towards the chalkboard where a cloud of smoke appeared and then cleared with a team of Chunin standing there with a man with a black bandana and some visible scars in front of them. All right, you maggots. My name is Habiki and I am the proctor for the first examination. Now line up. Take a number and then take your designated seat and then we will get to the test. Ibiki ordered. It took some time before everyone was seated, scattered around the room and away from their teammates. Naruto was sitting next to the girl that was constantly staring at him, trying to solve the mystery of who he was. Now the first test is a written exam, and this is a team event. You will each start off with 30 points, 10 for each member of the team and for every question you get wrong you will lose a point. The teams with the highest point values will move on to the next round. Now for some details. If a member of your team fails to answer all of the questions then your team is out. If you are caught cheating you will lose two points. There are proctors sitting around the room making sure that your little shits don't try anything. Now you have one hour to complete the test. Begin. Ibiki explained. The genin in the room all flipped their papers over and Naruto read over the questions and blinked at the difficulty of them. This would be too hard for a genin team to handle, even under the best of circumstances. Naruto thought of the way that Ibiki had explained the rules and realized that they had to cheat in order to answer the questions, meaning that there were probably several chunin scattered about the test takers with the correct answers. Smirking Naruto just started answering the questions, already knowing most of the answers himself and he knew that his clones would know them as well. Once he was finished answering the nine questions he read over the little explanation that the final question would be given ten minutes before the end of the exam. Closing his eyes he let his senses spread out, listening to the sounds of people writing. Opening his eyes he saw that the girl had finished writing as well and he smirked. Done? He asked. Yes. She nodded. Who'd you copy off of? Naruto asked. Some from a person if you rose ahead and then the rest off of you and your team. Not bad. Naruto smirked my name is Yami. No it isn't. She stated I know that much for certain, but you are using a Nam. Naruto's smirk turned into an amused smile as he nodded at her true as that is. Yami is all you're going to get out of me. Hinata Hyuga. Hinata Chan. Naruto smirked as he saw a light blush come on her face. It wasn't long before teams were getting eliminated and then finally Ibiki was prepared to give them the last question. This last question comes with the option of whether or not you take it. Ibiki begin if you chose not to. You and your team will leave this exam now. Then why would we chose not to take it then? A genin asked. Because if you get this question wrong. You and your entire team will remain genin forever. Ibiki replied curtly as many of the genin started shouting that this wasn't fair and that he couldn't do that I can do this, and for those that have taken Thai's exam before, well I guess they never had me as a proctor before. So what will you all do? Naruto smirked at this and leaned back in his seat as Hinata looked a little worried but in the end she didn't raise her hand to be removed. Several teams left at this point and once all was finished there were still 22 teams left. Ibiki glanced over the room and in the end nodded his head. Very well then. For those of you that remain, you pass. Ibiki smiled. Shocking all of them let me explain. The tenth question was the test itself. If you become a Chunin and are asked to lead a mission, where you don't know where exactly your objective is, how many enemies there are between you and it, or the possible traps and defensive features that are made between you and it, do you take it or wait for a safer mission? You take it. There are no safe missions for a Shinobi, and anyone that would rather wait for the guarantee instead of taking the chance on the mission doesn't deserve to be a Chunin. Then what was the point of the questions? Naruko asked. That was to test your information gathering skills. Almost none of you should have been able to answer those questions. So we had Chunin scattered about the room with the correct answers for those of you that were clever enough to find them. Ibiki explained this is because sometimes... The right information or false information can change the entire mission. Ibiki then removed the bandana revealing the torture marks on him. Naruto stared intently at this and nodded his respect for a man that could suffer such damage and still go on as a shinobi. To all of you that have passed I congratulate you and wish you luck. Your next proctor is. Ibiki was about to finish when the glass was burst open by a black bundle flying in. Just as it was about to reach the center of the room for a kunai shot out pinning the corners of it up revealing a banner and a woman standing there. The banner read Anko Mai Tarashi in big kanji, while below it in smaller ones it read Sexy Kanoichi. Alright, don't celebrate just yet. I'm Anko Mai Tarashi, 
your second proctor for this exam. Anko shouted as she started counting the teams and turned to look at Ibiki. 22 teams left. You are slipping. We have some exceptional gen in this year. Ibiki replied calmly. HMPH. Well by the time my test is over I'll cut their numbers in half. Anko smirked as the teams all looked scared. With the exception of a few individuals now come on and follow me. It wasn't long before all the genin were standing outside of a massive gated wood, with trees as tall as some of the buildings that Naruto had seen in AIM. Welcome to Training Ground 44, otherwise known as the Forest of Death. Anko grinned as several genin shuddered in fear while others just stared at her. Waiting for her to get to the point now this exam is a survival exam. For five days you all will be locked in here trying to complete your objective. And what might that be? A genin asked. Glad you asked shit stain. Anko smiled as she held up two scrolls, one red heaven and the other earth. Now all you have to do is this. Each team will be given a scroll to carry on them, and during the five days they must get the other scroll that will match theirs and get to the tower in the center of the forest. Now some general rules are this. You and your entire team must arrive at the tower, no exceptions. Do not open your scroll before you get to the tower, and finally try to stay alive. So we're allowed to kill in there? Naruto asked with a grin. Yep, go right ahead. But it's not only the other teams that you need to watch out for. There are plenty of wildlife in there that would love to munch on some tasty genin like yourselves. There are also plenty of poisonous plants as well. So be cautious, Anko explained. But what about food? The hefty kid from Eno's team shouted. The forest has plenty of food for the experienced outdoorsman. Anko replied now all we need for you to do before you get your scroll is to fill out these liability waivers. Soon Chunin assistants were handing out sheets of paper, and Naruto and his team were one of the first to sign theirs and walk up to Anko to hand them in. Once they were finished they were allowed to get into a line where they received a random scroll, where no one could see them and then assigned a gate number where they were to start off at. It took a few minutes for everyone to get their scroll and then get to the gate. Once their Anko gave them the go-ahead over a PA system and they were off into the woods. Naruto smirked as he stopped and nodded for the clones to move on ahead, as he stopped and started to cut loose. It took only 10 minutes for Naruto to find his first team, a group from Karigakure who were moving on the forest floor, trying to stay quiet as they planned on sneaking up on another team. Naruto only smirked as he struck from the shadows, Akaripa drawn as he struck, taking the head off of two of them on the first pass, before turning and sending a wave of poison shuriken into the last man who couldn't even scream in pain or fear as the poison closed off his windpipe, cutting off all sounds as the poison did its work and killed him. Sighing at how easy it was Naruto sifted through their gear, taking some of their provisions and then their scroll. A heaven scroll, which he already had. Shrugging he sealed it into a smaller scroll and then moved on, targeting the next team. For now Naruto went about and killed the stragglers, making sure that he took their scrolls as he did, managing to acquire three complete sets and then extra earth scroll now. Having gotten bored of killing weak gen and Naruto made his way towards the tower where he stopped to see Orokimaru attacking Sasuke and his team. Naruto frowned at what he saw but watched as Orokimaru played with the boy while Naruko had been incapacitated and Sakura shook in fear at Orokimaru. It wasn't long before Sasuke managed to unleash a surprise counterattack that trapped Orokimaru and hit him with powerful blasts of fire but it was revealed to be a Tsuchibunshin. Impressive Sasuke-kun. Orokimai left as he extended his neck and bit into Sasuke, leaving the cursed seal on him. Naruto simply shook his head as Sasuke fell to the ground, suffering from the effects of the new mark on him while Sakura finally stopped being useless and managed to get Sasuke and Naruko to a shelter that she quickly rigged with traps. Naruto nodded at this and decided to move on. Knowing that this was part of Orokimaru's plan and that it was too early to start following his orders just yet. It took him a few hours to reach the tower and when he did arrive he found that his clones were waiting for him and he stopped in front of the mural, quickly reading it and then opening the scrolls. At the same time, having a Chunin appear who told him he had passed the second exam and that he was the first team to do so. Please head for your assigned room and rest there. The Chunin stated as he went to inform Anko and the Hukage that a team had passed already. Naruto only smirked as the Chunin walked off and he went to his room, planning on resting these next few days while he waited to see who would survive the forest. Chapter 3 Corruption By the time the four days had passed Naruto had found that most of the teams had been eliminated, most by him 
but several others were either defeated or dead. At the moment there were six other teams present and still a few hours left for any stragglers to arrive. Just as they were admitted to a large arena Team 7 arrived, looking like the forest had been rough on them. As they entered and lined up the Jonin instructors arrived for the various teams, with Naruto spotting Kanan there, which slightly surprised him that she had left aim for this. It wasn't long before Minato stepped forward and congratulated them for passing the second exam. However there are far too many of you to move straight into the third and final exam. That is why we will be having a preliminary round. Minato stated, causing several of the genin to protest and question this choice let me explain. These exams are held not only to test your abilities but to show them to prospective clients and dignitaries from other villages. This can help your village grow stronger if you show that the genin from the village are skilled enough. However we don't want them sitting around for hours or possibly days while you all compete, that is why we will have a preliminary round to cut your numbers down even more. Sir. Perhaps I should continue, a Jonin stated as he moved forward. Go ahead Gecko. Minato nodded as he stepped back. Now these will be single combat matches, unless there are an odd number of you in which case we will have a three-way battle for that. Now if there is anyone that wishes to drop out now is your chance. This will not affect your team, Gecko explained, coughing every now and again. At this point Kabuta raised his hand as did Naruto's two clones. Once Gekko took down their names the three left and the back wall opened up to reveal a giant screen that was flashing through names until it stopped on two of them. The first match is Sasuke Uchiha vs. Dosu. All others please move up to the viewing area. Gekko exclaimed. Naruto walked to the left with the Odo Nin, Suna Nin and Kabuto's two teammates. Kanan soon joined him and stood beside him. Both intent on the matches. Surprised that you're here. Naruto stated thought you would be busy with other matters. Nagato said that to maintain the illusion of you being a true gen and that your sensei should be here. This is only for appearances. Kanan replied now let's see what Itachi's younger brother can do. Naruto only nodded as the match started. Dosu charged forward revealing a strange gauntlet with holes on it that started emitting such a high-pitched noise that Naruto was the only one that could actually hear it. Ouch. Naruto grumbled at the noise that gauntlet of his is emitting sound. Interesting concept, taking down the opponent's balance. Kanan nodded in agreement. Sasuke seemed aware of what the gauntlet did and it took only a moment before he finished the hand signs and launched his technique. Katan, go kaku no jutsu fire release. Great fireball technique. Sasuke roared as he emitted a massive fireball that Dosu barely dodged, but Naruto saw what Sasuke had actually done and smirked as Sasuke rushed in, two kunai out, one with a flash bomb attached as he threw it while shielding his eyes. Dosu was caught off guard by this and when he tried to use the sound to stop Sasuke he realized that the fire hadn't been meant to stop him it had been meant to take out his weapon. Sasuke soon had his back and the kunai was to his throat while Sasuke had his arms trapped behind him. Winner Sasuke Gekko exclaimed as the Uchiha nodded before standing and then wincing as he grabbed his neck. Kakashi acted quickly and grabbed the team before leaving where Naruto noticed that the Odo's sensei left as well. So he did mark him. Kanan noted, yeah, not much we can do about it. Naruto nodded as the next match was announced. Timari vs Tenten. Gekko shouted as the two girls leapt down. Tenten was a girl from Lee's team and she was carrying several scrolls with her that Naruto was sure were all full of surprises. The match started and Tenten tried to defeat her opponent with a barrage of kunai and other throwing weapons but all Timari did was open her fan swing at once to create a massive twister that threw Tenten into the ceiling where Timari stopped the twister and let the dazed girl fall onto her closed fan, taking all the fight right out of the girl. Winner Timari Gekko exclaimed as Timari threw Tenten off her fan before walking back up to the stands while the weapons were cleared off the arena floor. Kanan Sensei, I'm going fishing. Naruto smirked as he nodded towards the other side. Kanan only nodded as Naruto flickered from sight and reappeared on the other platform. Moving between a few people he stood by Hinata and her team. Yami-san. Hinata nodded as he stood next to her, while Kurunai looked at the blonde teen. Friend of yours? She asked her student. Just someone we met during the first exam. Kiba replied he really annoys Naruko. Oh really? Kurunai asked with a smirk at the other blonde and what exactly did he do to annoy her so much? Stepped into a potential international incident. Naruto replied as Sunanin was about to hit the grandson of the late Sandame Hukage, and Naruko wasn't helping the situation, so I stepped in and she got mad. Kurunai nodded at this as the next match was announced. Zaku vs Shinobaram, one of Hinata's teammates. The taller boy walked down the stairs where he faced the wounded Odo Nin, 
who had both arms broken apparently. What happened to him? Kiba asked. Sasuke did that to him. Sakura replied from down the line they tried to attack us and when Sasuke woke up from his fever he beat them all. Naruto only nodded at her explanation as he watched Zaku manage to move one of his arms and fire a blast of air toward Shino who disappeared in a cloud of bugs and reappeared behind Zaku while the insects moved towards the Odo Genin. Give up. You are finished. Shino stated calmly if you move your arm towards me the insects will swarm you. And if you keep it aimed at them I will attack you. You know, I think I can manage with this arm. Zaku exclaimed as he lifted his arm from the sling and aimed the arms in two different directions. As he tried to fire the blasts again his arms exploded and Naruto chuckled as he realized what had happened. He had his bugs go into those holes didn't he? Naruto asked. Yes. Hinata nodded. Impressive. Naruto nodded in turn never take an abaram lightly huh? Not if you want to live. Kiba chuckled as the medics took Zaku away and Shino walked back up to his team. The next match was Ino Yamanaka versus Sakura Haruno, and from the way Kiba sighed Naruto guessed that this was going to be bad. Once the pair were down in the arena they both adjusted their headbands to cover their foreheads and created two bunchins and then sent shuriken at each other. Kami above it's like watching academy students. Naruto groaned as he looked at them please tell me all the kunoichi in this village aren't this pathetic and it's just these two. They aren't. Kurenai stated as she glared at him. Oh thank you. Naruto exclaimed I hate weak women. Now Kurenai blinked at that before refocusing on the match, where it was going at a snail's pace before Ino apparently decided to cut off her long hair like Sakura had done sometime in the forest. They fought for a few more moments before Ino struck, preparing to use her family's technique and send her mind into Sakura's body. As she was about to do this she poured chakra into her hair and made it hold Sakura still while she launched her mind. Once in Sakura's body Ino was about to forfeit when suddenly Sakura took control again forcing Ino's mind out of her. Didn't see that coming. Shikamaru stated from where he was leaning on the railing normally she can be stopped forced out like that. First time for everything I guess. Choji replied as the match reached its final moments where they both charged at each other, slugged the other and both passed out. Kami that was pathetic. Can I get those minutes of my life back? Naruto asked. Unfortunately no. Hinata replied we all want them back. Agreed. Kiba nodded as Akamaru barked his agreement. Once the two girls were removed from the arena floor the next match was called. Kankuro vs Choji Akamaki. Gekko exclaimed as the two walked down with Kankuro facing Choji with a smug grin. When the match started Choji used his own family technique to increase his size and become a giant rolling tank that charged towards Kankuro. Now Kankuro blinked in shock at this and leapt aside before opening the bundle and revealing a large puppet that he started controlling. As Choji changed directions to run Kankuro over the Suna Gen and only had his puppet move forward, extend a blade and make a small cut on Choji's side as he rolled past. Before Choji knew what had happened he was back to normal. Screaming in pain. Winner Kankuro. Gekko exclaimed as the medics ran in and loaded him onto a gurney. It's silver thorn poison. Kankuro stated as he walked back up to the stands. The medics nodded at this and soon had Choji out of the arena and towards the hospital where he could be treated. The next match is Naruko vs Kiba. Gekko exclaimed as the blonde girl teared as she leapt down. Kick her ass. Naruto stated as he patted Kiba's arm. No problem. Kiba chuckled as he and Akamaru entered the arena a smug grin on his face. Kiba made the opening move by feeding Akamaru a soldier pill and then the dog transformed into a feral looking Kiba. Kiba then imitated the transformation and the pair struck, spinning and becoming a deadly piercing attack that bounced around the walls and floor, making it very difficult to predict. Gechizuka. Kiba roared as they struck. Naruko only laughed as she dodged around the technique, following the flow and moving though the ever-shifting gaps before she struck. Just as they stopped, Cage Bunchin no Jutsu, she shouted as she created a clone that targeted one of the Kibas while she went for the other. Naruto watched intently as she fought, picking apart her Taijutsu skills and seeing that Kashina and Minato hadn't been lax on her training and that she was easily as strong as most chunin and that these exams were only a formality to get her a promotion. It took only minutes for her to beat both Kiba and Akamaru to a pulp and they were soon carted out as well. It sucked. Naruto noted I was hoping Kiba would wipe the floor with her. Not very likely. She's one of the strongest shinobi this year. Kurenai replied I'd be shocked if anyone here could best her. It's still early. Naruto replied you haven't seen all the competitors yet, 
and I know for a fact that the redhead over there will destroy his opponent. Kura and I only looked at the blonde before turning her gaze to the screen for the next match. Hinata Hyuga vs Kin. Gecko exclaimed as the two girls walked down and now Naruto leaned forward, looking forward to seeing how strong these two teams would be. When the match started Kin threw a senpan with a bell attached to it that Hinata dodged with ease and then Kin threw another two, one with a bell. One without that Hinata used a basic Jukin to block them both before closing the gap and striking several of Kin's Tenketsu points sealing her chakra and forcing her down. Winner Hinata Gekko shouted as Hinata walked back up and Naruto nodded to her as the next match was called Neji Hyuga vs Shikamaru. The two teens walked down and faced each other with Shikamaru already running the fight several moves ahead while Neji did the same thing and already had an idea of how to deal with Shikamaru. When the match started Neji had leapt away and took out out a flash bomb, triggering it and causing all the shadows in the arena to disappear as he had closed his eyes and allowed his Bakugan to lead him to a blinded Shikamaru where he soon was closing all of his Tenketsu points, letting Shikamaru collapse to the ground as the match was ended in a matter of seconds. It was ruthless. Naruto remarked it was like night and day between you two. Yes, my cousin is very strong. Hinata nodded slightly worried about having to possibly face her cousin in the next round. The next match was Rock Lee vs Subaku no Gara and Naruto knew for a fact that Lee was screwed up the ass. The match started with Lee coming to face Gara's sand shield that protected him from getting hurt. It wasn't long before Guy gave Lee permission to remove his weights and when he did there was a loud boom as they fell to the ground. Kami, how much do those weigh? Naruto asked Guy. As much as needed. Guy replied with a grin Lee won't lose easily. Aha, uh -huh. have you seen the sky? Guy he's facing? Naruto asked as he saw that Lee was now fast enough to get past the shield and was striking Gara. As he hit the team Naruto saw sand dropping and realized that he was wearing a layer of sand as armor. It didn't take long for Lee to strike and unleash his technique. Omode wrench front lotus trapping Gara in bandages as he slammed the red-headed teen into the ground. However this proved ineffective as the sand had caught him and cushioned him. Gara stood up and then sent mass amounts of sand smashing into Lee as the teen was currently suffering from the after effects of using the technique. Well this looks like the end. Naruto replied, I have to agree with Yami. Kakashi nodded Lee did good but he is taking the after effects of this technique. No need to worry. Guy replied the lotus of the leaf blooms twice. Kakashi blinked in shock as he looked at Guy you did that. That technique is too dangerous for a genin to learn. I'm disappointed in you. What do you know of that boy? Guy asked as he looked at Kakashi. Guy gave a short summary of how even though Lee had no ninja or Genjutsu skills he still worked harder than anyone he knew, and that by giving him this he gave Lee the potential to be a splendid shinobi. Naruto nodded at this as he saw Lee getting up and releasing more of the gates to fight against Gara. Lee soon looked red as he moved so fast that most of the Jonin could barely follow him and Naruto had trouble keeping track of the movements himself. Lee struck kicking Gara into the air where he struck by wrapping the teen in the bandages again and began hammering the Suna Genin with such force and speed that Gara's defense couldn't aid him at all. Lee ended the technique with an open palm strike combined with a kick at the same time, smashing Gara into the ground leaving a rather large crater. When Lee landed he looked like he could barely stand and Naruto knew that by using those gates he had pushed himself far past his limits. Looking into the crater Naruto saw that it was only Gara's sand armor inside of the crater and that amount of sand was rising with the real Gara coming out from under it. With a maniacal grin Gara struck, smashing Lee around before sending tendrils of sand to try and trap Lee. Lee leapt away and only had his right arm and leg caught and when Gara closed his hand, crushed. Winner Gara. Gekko shouted as he moved to stop Gara before he could kill Lee. Gara was about to fully encase Lee when Guy leapt down and disrupted the sand, glaring at Gara to make him stop. It took a moment for the sand armor to ry encase Gara and once it had he left, heading back up to the stands where Lee was soon carted off and Naruto leapt down for the final match, the three-way battle. The final match is the three-way fight between Yami, Yoi, and Tsuruji. Gekko stated as the three faced each other, with Yoroi and Tsuruji both agreeing to take down Yami first then deal with each other begin. The match was short and decisive as Naruto targeted Yoroi and drew Akaripa and cut off one of Yoroi's legs before taking his back, grabbing his head and twisting so his head was now facing his back. Tsuruji blinked in shock as he saw his teammate killed and before he could forfeit Naruto had thrown Akaripa and it had pinned him to the wall as Naruto moved right in front of him, grabbed his arms and ripped them off and then cut his head off. All of this happened in the span of less than 20 seconds, 
faster than Gecko could stop the match and stop him from killing the pair. Whoa! Kankuro whistled as he saw how quickly the blonde with the strange eyes had killed the two other plants. Gara was staring intently at the blood-soaked blonde and promised a voice whispering to him that it would get its chance to kill this foe. Winner Yummy! Gecko stated as the medics came in and removed the two bodies. Now would the winners please come down here so we can explain what the next round will entail. It took a few moments for all nine of them to line up and once they did Monado stepped forward to explain the next round. Now the finals will take place in one month, giving the dignitaries time to arrive and see the matches. You will be seeing who you are up against in a few moments. The matches will be just like these were, with hopefully less death. Minato paused to give Yami a look that the blonde only smirked at. Now here is the lineup. The first match is Naruko Uzumaki Namakaze vs Yami. Second is Hinata Huga vs Neji Huga. Third is Shinobu Ram vs Kankuro. Fourth is Subaku no Gara vs Sasuke Uchiha. Timari will then face the winner of that match. You have one month to train and prepare for the matches ahead. I wish you all the best of luck. With that the genin all began to leave but Minato stopped Naruto to have a word with him. I want you to know that I do not approve of needless killing. Minato stated I do not want to see good shinobi dying pointless deaths. They stood against me. They received their fate. Naruto replied any that think to oppose me shall perish. Just know this. I am giving the ANBU at the arena next month permission to use deadly force if you do not stop when the proctor calls the match, against you and Subaku no Gara. Minato warned I will be informing him of this as well. So noted. Naruto replied as he turned and left. I am looking forward to making your daughter bleed in front of your whole village. Minato had to resist the urge to destroy this threat to his dog other and once he calmed down enough he left the forest praying that things didn't turn out as badly as he feared. Naruto was soon out of the forest walking back into the village as Kanan said her goodbye and returned to aim. As Naruto walked he decided to take a soak and made his way towards the hot springs. As he approached he saw an older man picking into the woman's side of the spring. Shaking his head he walked up towards the man and spoke. This is a quick way to get yourself killed. He noted. S-H-H-H. The man hissed I'm doing research. Research? Naruto deadpanned. Yes research. He retorted. I need the inspiration for my books. What on earth do you write? Itcha itcha. Naruto asked, shaking his head. How do you know? He asked in shock. Now Naruto blinked in shock as he really looked at the man and finally recognized his godfather, the one person from the village that had ever taken notice of him. Just a guess. Pleasure to meet you Jiraiya. Naruto nodded as he turned to walk away before Jiraiya grabbed his arm and stopped him. Do I know you? He asked with a frown. You seem familiar. Just a coincidence I guess. Naruto replied. Is that so? Jiraiya replied as he ran a cursory gaze over the blonde and started piecing together details. Well care to explain where you got that sword? I found it. Naruto replied. Where? Does it matter? Yes since it belongs to my former student's wife. Jiraiya stated and given the fact that the blade was stolen you are either the thief or you picked it up off a dead body. Would it matter either way? Naruto asked with a smirk the Hukage has already seen me use this blade and hasn't said a word about it that so. Jiraiya nodded as he stared at the blonde well you weren't noticed then Naruto. Naruto blinked and soon had a kunai out and at Jiraiya's throat. How did you know? I guessed. Jiraiya chuckled now are you going to kill me or not? Naruto glared at him but in the end he took a step back and decided to see how things would play out. So are you going to tell the village? Why? You were able to get away with not only your mother's sword but your father's precious scroll without anyone noticing for over 24 hours. You seem to have found a new home for yourself in AIM. So I'm content to let you be where you're happy. Jiraiya replied. I see why Kanan Sensei and Nagato Sensei speak so highly of you. Naruto chuckled. You're getting trained by Kanan and Nagato. Jiraiya exclaimed. Yeah, and a few other people. Naruto replied. Look I need to take a soak. Why don't you take a break from peeping and join me? We can talk there. Fine. Jiraiya nodded as he closed the note a bit and stood up. Walking in with the blonde, soon the pair were in the hot water and discussing a few things. So what about Yahiko? Jiraiya asked. He died. Hanzo killed him before they accomplished the takeover. Naruto replied at least that's what Kanan Sensei told me. I see. It's a shame that he died. He was a good kid. They all were. So you became a shinobi over in AIM huh? Yeah. After I ran away I made my way kind of randomly and wound up in AIM. Kanan sensei found me and took me in. They agreed to train me when I explained to them why I had left. They both agreed to train me. That's good. So why are you here? In truth, two reasons. First is for the exams. 
I wanted to test myself against people my own age. The second is because we owed a favor to Orokimaru. Orokimaru? Jiraiya exclaimed. Yeah. At my request he did some experiments on me. That's the reason why my eyes are like this. And he called in his last favor with us to get me to help him. Naruto explained but I have my own plans for this. Hence the reason I'm telling you all this. What's he planning? Jiraiya asked. An invasion with Suna helping him. They plan on attacking during the finals in one month. With the signal being Gara turning into Shukaku. Naruto explained. I see. Jiraiya nodded. What else can you tell me? He plans on killing the Hakage and destroying the village. He has plenty of forces and with a crazed demon attacking alongside the snake summons, he has the potential to do it. Naruto stated however I plan on throwing a few problems in his way. How so? First telling you all of this. Naruto smirked second is to deal with Gara. You realize that I will have to tell Minato all about this. Jiraiya pointed out. That's fine. Just keep me out of it. Naruto replied just say that your informants gave it to you. Deal. Jiraiya nodded now how about I help you with something. What? The Rasengan. Jiraiya replied as Naruto's eyes widened I can teach it to you if you like. Are you kidding? Of course I want to learn it. Naruto exclaimed. Jiraiya smiled at this and soon they left and Jiraiya bought the supplies needed to teach the blonde the technique. The first step was to make a water balloon pop using your chakra. Naruto observed Jiraiya do it first with careful interest and once it was his turn he remembered how Jiraiya had made the balloon look and replicated it. Sending his chakra in multiple directions inside of the balloon and then picking up the speed until it burst. Not bad. Now here's the next part. Jiraiya nodded as he tossed him a rubber ball. The step is all about power now that you have the form. Naruto nodded as he started doing the same thing and then after a good 30 minutes managed to get a hold to pop the ball. A good try. But not nearly enough. Jiraiya replied you need to make it explode like the water balloon. Naruto grunted as he tried again with a new ball and quickly realized that this was going to be tricky as he went through another 10 balls. Finally he just doubled the amount of chakra he was circulating and the ball burst. Impressive. Jiraiya nodded you're learning this faster than Naruto did. Took her a few days to get this far. Guess we know who the real prodigy is now. Naruto chuckled darkly. Don't get cocky. Here's the last step. Jiraiya replied as he handed him a regular balloon now all you have to is repeat what you did on the last step but not make the balloon pop it's all about control control naruto asked with a frown here let me show you jiraiya shrugged as he walked over to a nearby tree this is where you are currently at he paused to make a rasengan in his hand you have the form and the power for it down but not the control jiraiya then rammed the sphere into the tree Creating a massive swirl on the bark it's a good stun technique that can send a person flying backwards but there isn't any real harm done to them. This is what the finished product is like. Jiraiya then made another Rasengan and rammed this one into the tree. Shredding the bark and into the underlying wood this one can be lethal if used correctly. It's why this is an A-Rek Ninjutsu. Naruto nodded at Jiraiya's explanation and then picked up the balloon and attempted to make the balloon stay stationary but after only two seconds it became lumpy and then popped with a large burst of wind. Scowling Naruto picked up the next balloon and tried again with only a second increase before it happened again. This continued for several hours which Jiraiya at this point had already walked off to do some more research while he still could. By the time the old pervert had returned Naruto was barely able to keep the sphere from popping. Not too bad Gaki, but I'd call it quits for today. Get some rest and eat something and pick it up again tomorrow. You've already used a ton of chakra. Jiraiya advised. You might be right. Naruto panted as he set the balloon down but I'm getting the hang of it. That you are. Kanan and Nagato have taught you well. Jiraiya nodded here. He then handed Naruto several bills go get dinner and meet me here tomorrow. I'm going to go inform Minato about the pending invasion could give us a chance to counteract the worst case scenario. Sounds good. Naruto nodded as he walked off, soon entering downtown portion and making his way to a Raymond stand. As he started eating he made sure that the cage puncheon that he had shadowing him stayed nearby, just in case someone tried anything against him so he could trade places with the clone and then strike the person from behind. Once he was done he made his way towards the hotel where all the foreign teams were staying when he spotted Dosu and Kin leaving the hospital where Zaku would be. Dosu, Kin. Naruto nodded as he walked past them. Yami, may we speak to you for a moment? Dosu asked. Naruto paused before nodding and motioning for them to keep walking. What is it? Naruto asked. Orokimaru set us up. Kin hissed with an edge to her voice. We were sent to kill Sasuke in the forest but Orokimaru had marked him with a cursed seal. 
just like his personal guards. So you think that you were being used as mere test subjects? Naruto summarized. We know it. Dosu replied he expected us to die in these exams, but we have surprised him. Now the problem is he will be wanting to use us for some new experiment like he will be doing to Zaku. We were too late to get him. Too late? Naruto asked. Orokimaru already came by as our Jonin instructor and took him out, saying he would take him to Odo for treatment. Kin explained odds are he'll be coming for us next. I see. And you came to me because... Naruto trailed off. Don't play stupid. We know that you're the foreign operative that Orokimaru called in a favor to get. We know that you are strong. Hopefully strong enough to beat him in a fight. Dosu retorted we need your help. And if I do... What's in it for me? Naruto smirked. What do you want? Kin asked hesitantly. Your loyalty. Swear your fealty to me, and place an appropriate seal over your hearts that will kill you if you try to betray me and I will aid you. Naruto stated calmly do this and I will hide you from the snake and make sure that you grow strong enough to serve me properly. Agreed. Dosu nodded. Fine. Kin agreed. Excellent. Come with me and I will place the seals on you. Then I will give you the aid that you need. Naruto replied as he led them to his hotel room where he had them take off their shirts. Kin having a slight blush as she did. Though Naruto was kind enough to have Dosu leave before he started hers. Once finished he had a specialized kill seal on both of them, ensuring their loyalty. Naruto then took blood from each of them and started the jutsu that Zitsu had shown him. Once he finished he created two copies of the two former Odo Nin, copies that would leave behind corpses should they be killed but lacked souls making them nothing more than dolls. These will take your place. Orokimaru expected you to die. But on the off chance that you didn't he would have ordered you to wait in your room. Now you will both stay here while I send these two to your room to wait for Orokimaru. Naruto explained as he finished making two seals that he placed on the back of each one's head and nodded as it was absorbed. Won't he know the difference? Dosu asked. Nope. This is a technique that only one other person knows how to use. And this is a bastardized version of it. His version is much more durable and combat appropriate. Mine is just good enough to fool assassins and others that a target is actually dead. Naruto shrugged the seals I put on them are basic instructions to tell them to move and do what Orokimaru says. But they have limited chakra and won't be able to last longer than 72 hours before they die. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on them until Orokimaru does the deed. The two exchanged looks as they saw the two copies leave and Naruto create a cage pension to go with him and make sure that they stayed functioning. The next day Naruto met up with Jiraiya again and continued working on the Rasengan while talking with Jiraiya about a few different things. So you're telling me that not only do you get paid for those books but you also get movie rights? Naruto asked, completely shocked that the smut paid that well. Yep, it pays so well that I could stay in the nicest hotels, eat the finest foods, hire the youngest whores. Naruto added with a smirk. Who needs whores? I am the legendary Jiraiya. Women fall to me like Sakura blossoms in a storm. More like run from you. Naruto retorted with a laugh. Hey Gaki. Notice anything? Jiraiya asked. Naruto blinked as he looked at the balloon and noticed that it was perfectly smooth. I did it. Naruto blinked. Yep. Figured your problem was that you were trying too hard, so I distracted you while your body did the rest. Jiraiya explained memorize that feeling, it's the completed Rasengan. Or at least the furthest completed form of it. Completed form? Naruto asked. Yeah. Minato is still tinkering with it. Says that he wants to add an elemental release to it as well. Make it into an S-rank technique. Jiraiya explained personally I think he's biting off more than he can chew. The technique is already deadly enough as it is, and adding in another high level step could be impossible, especially combining the peak of chakra manipulation with the peak of elemental manipulation. Naruto nodded at this and filed the information away for further use. Jiraiya soon said his farewells and went off to help make plans for the village's defense. Letting Naruto begin his wandering around the training grounds where he soon found Hinata training, trying to complete a technique. Naruto observed her for a few moments when suddenly Hinata spoke. You can come out now Yami-san, she stated. Chuckling to himself the blonde walked out of the tree line and nodded to her. Those are some good eyes you have, he smirked. I noticed you moving closer a while ago and decided to see what you planned on doing. Hinata replied. Just seeing how your training is going. Naruto shrugged looks like you're having some trouble. A little. Hinata admitted I am trying to complete a technique that's only passed down verbally through my family. Family, but I just can't get it. Well perhaps a spar will point you in the right direction. Naruto offered as he set his sword aside and faced her show me what you can do. Hinata stared at him before entering her own fighting stance and moved in, 
trying to use the Jukin to strike him. Naruto however was far faster than her and easily dodged her attacks by the smallest of margins, using light strikes to hit the gaps that she left open. They continued for a few minutes before Hinata stopped and leapt back before he could hit her. You're going easy on me. She frowned. No I'm not. I'm fighting at Neji's level. Naruto retorted you weren't even able to make one blow against me and I was able to make several against you. You leave yourself too open when you take the offensive. Then what should I do? Run, Hinata asked. No, fight defensively. Naruto replied as he walked back in front of her. Let's go again. This time don't make the attacks just counter mine. Hinata nodded as they started again and found that this time when Naruto took the offensive like Neji would likely do Hinata was able to track his blows and use her own Jukin to strike his arms and avoiding the worst of any possible blows. This time it was Naruto that stopped the match as he leaned back to avoid a strike and then took a step back to show that they were done. That was better. Naruto nodded but against Neji that isn't enough. What's holding you back? Nothing is. Hinata replied calmly. Naruto Naruto only frowned as he turned and picked up his blade before beginning to leave. If you say so. But while my eyes may not be as special as yours, they can see plenty that yours can't. I can see that you are holding yourself back, and that you are scared of facing Neji. Naruto stated as he walked off, leaving Hinata to think on his remark. Once he was out of sight he created a cage puncheon and had it shadow Hinata for the rest of the day wanting to learn what it was that caused a potentially powerful shinobi to hold back so much. That night as he sat in his room with Dosu and Kin already asleep the clone disappeared and the memories arrived. The clone had followed Hinata home where it had snuck into the compound and had watched as Hinata's father made her spar against her young sister, who attacked her mercilessly while Yanta chose not to strike her younger sibling. After the match was over her father berated her pathetic performance and told her that if she were to lose to Neji in the finals that she would no longer be the heiress for the clan and that she would be placed into the branch family. The clone had watched for a while longer and once it had seen enough had dispelled itself and now Naruto knew exactly the right buttons to push. The next morning Naruto stood on the roof of the hotel watching the storm clouds roll in and smiled at them. As he stood there he sensed the presence of another person arrive. Naruto. Orokimaru remarked from behind him. Orokimaru. Naruto nodded. What do you want? I came to inform you that the Odo Nin had been collected, and to thank you for tying up those loose ends with Kabuto's team. Orokimaru nodded. Not a problem. Naruto replied they thought they could beat me. Orokimaru chuckled at that as he walked to stand beside Naruto. Everything is moving accordingly. Good to know. Naruto nodded and I finally get to put my mouthy sister in her place. It's going to be a day to remember. Feel free to kill her. Orokimaru grinned no sense in leaving the demon in a container that could be a threat later. I might. I might not. We will see. Naruto replied with a shrug as he faced Orokimaru. Anything else? No that is all. I will be going to deal with the Kazikage. So you will be on your own here until the invasion. Orokimaru explained. Noted. Naruto nodded as he walked away. Now if you will excuse me I have things to do. Of course. Orokimaru nodded as he left in a swirl of leaves. Naruto made his way back to his room and found Kin and Dosu still there. Looking at him, you're safe for now. Naruto stated Orokimaru has left to work on the next step to his plan. That's a relief. Kin sighed. Tomorrow you will be leaving. You know where you have to go. Once I am able to I will send a clone to meet you and give you the scrolls and items I want you to start learning how to use. Naruto explained so lay low for today and when you leave make sure that you use a hench to slip past the guards. Especially since Kabuto is still around. Of course. Dosu nodded as Naruto turned and left. Soon arriving at the training ground where Hinata was training again, practicing her jukin on a log. Naruto waited a moment before speaking. You're afraid. He stated causing Hinata to turn and stare at him. You fear hurting your family, but you also fear being hurt in turn. You're afraid of having that cursed seal placed on you, but you are also afraid of it being placed on your sister. Your fear bleeds from you, permeating the very air around you. You will never beat Neji or any true shinobi the way you are. What are you talking about? Hinata asked. Your fear is what hinders you. Your fear is what has stopped you from growing and being strong. Naruto replied calmly as he walked closer. When you strike it says I'm afraid of hurting you. When you dodge it's I'm afraid of being hurt. Even when you protect someone it says I'm afraid of them being hurt. You must abandon this fear if you wish to survive. Hinata tried to speak but Naruto just kept on going. You do not want your sister to be hurt. But you do not want to be hurt in turn. There is no safe path in life. Someone must be hurt in order for others to live. It is the simple fact of all life. The weak become food for the strong. 
but you try to change that with your cowardice that is simply becoming weak. Rise up Hinata, face that fear of yours, strike down your enemies, do not let them strike you, do not let those you care for be hurt. Abandon that fear and replace it with your rage. How dare they try to hurt you, how dare they try to hurt your precious people. Let your rage out. Let it roar to the heavens. Naruto roared. Hinata blinked in confusion as she felt Naruto's words strike her in her core and knew that he was speaking the truth. But she didn't want to hurt Hanabi or Neji. But she didn't want to be hurt by her family. Hinata tried to find a way to not have to face his words but his eyes had captured hers and she knew that running wouldn't help her. As she stared into those demonic eyes she could see her own pain and fear reflected in them. See how weak she looked right now. She hated it. She hated that she looked so pathetic in his eyes. Hated that she knew this was how her family saw her. She could feel the anger, feel the rage at how she had acted rising up. In a wordless howl he had to screamed, just as the storm broke. Naruto only smiled as he finally broke her, his plan going so smoothly. Stepping right in front of her, he placed a hand on her shoulder and kept his gaze locked with hers. Be strong. Do not let those that would hinder you stop you. Do not let your fear rise up again. To be scared is fine. But never let it control you. Face your fears. If you do not want to be trapped in the same way Neji is, rise up and defeat him. Show that you are stronger than him, than your sister. Show your fangs and rip out the throats of those that would harm you. Naruto said become a Shinigami if you must, but never let yourself become weak. Hinata stared at him and felt that she really did know him from somewhere but right now his words pounded into her head and she saw the truth in them could see that he had gone down a very similar path and was trying to make sure that she did as well, to set her free and to become a more powerful person. Tears started to form on in her eyes and when they dripped down they were lost in the deluge that had struck them. I'm scared, she whispered. Don't let it control you, he said. I don't know if this is right. We never do. What if I hurt someone I love? If they would seek to hinder you then they do not love you. Naruto replied calmly. But, do not be timid. Be a predator. Be strong and fierce. Be a being that fears no one. Naruto hissed be the true Hinata Hyuga. Hinata stared at him and could feel the pure strength strength radiating from him, drew it into herself and she realized that she wanted to be like this man, to be strong and confident, to be free of the shackles that her family had placed on her, that her fear had placed on her. She wanted to be able to be a strong shinobi, to not be held back by anything. Show me. Naruto growled show me how strong you really are. Hinata didn't even know what she was doing when she struck, trying so desperately to hit this man who seemed to egg her on. Naruto moved around her blows and sent his own in return but Hinata would let nothing strike her as her arms moved on their own. All hesitation gone from her as she blocked and countered his every move while he dodged around her strikes, keeping his movements to those of the average chunin and showing her that she could be a powerful woman. The pair were locked in this intricate dance for nearly 15 minutes the rain still pouring and lightning flashing as they did, but finally they stopped facing each other as Hinata started to laugh. This is what it's like to be strong? She laughed. This is only the tip of the iceberg my dear Hinata-chan. Naruto chuckled but this is the first step. What do I have to do to take the rest? She asked with a grin. Be patient. Naruto replied the next step is to defeat Neji. After that we will talk about what you can do to become the true shinobi you were meant to be. Hinata only nodded as Naruto turned and started to leave train hard. Grow stronger and stronger. Rise up to my level and stand beside me if you can, or fail and fall back to depths of despair you have crawled from. The choice is yours, but I do not want the weak to stand beside me. Hinata only nodded at his words and started for home, intent on meeting his expectations. This man who would push her to be more than she thought that she could be. Chapter 4 A Matter of Family The day of the finals dawn and Naruto only smiled at the events that were about to unfold. Today he would get the chance to show how weak his sister really was. Today he would get to see if Hinata was indeed worthy of standing beside him and today would be the day that this village got the wake up call that it was no longer the strongest out there. It only took a few moments for him to leave the hotel. Walking through the streets as he made his way into the arena and found that only the Suna siblings were there, and all three of them seemed focused on what was about to happen. Yami, Timari nodded when she saw him is everything ready? I haven't been told anything is amiss. Naruto replied calmly as he leaned on the railing overlooking the arena floor you all know what to do. Just play it safe and stay together and you'll be fine. Before anything else could be said Neji walked in and glared at the four before taking a seat as the other competitors arrived. Hinata walked in after Neji, 
her jacket now open and her timidness gone. She smiled at Yummy and stood beside him, her way of saying that this was where she was going to stand by the end of the exams. The next person to enter was Shino who nodded to Inata before taking a seat as well, seeming to prepare for his match. Finally Sasuke and Naruka walked in both looking confident after the month of training and Naruto was looking forward to seeing Sasuke's growth if he was to be of any use later. Naruko glared at Yami, knowing that they were first and she was looking forward to putting that smug bastard in his place. Minato had warned her that he was dangerous but she just chalked it up as her father being overprotective. I mean I'm the strongest genin of our generation. There's no way that some no-name shinobi from some piss poor country can beat me. She reasoned to herself. It wasn't long before they were all called down to the matches and Naruto looked up at the cage box and saw that Minato was up there with Kashina sitting to his right while to his left was Orokimaru disguised at the Kazikage. Minato then gave a short speech about the honor it was to have such fine genin taking part and that they should all be honored that they had made it this far. Once he was finished the proctor for the exam stepped forward and announced the first match. As the others left Naruto and Naruko faced each other for the first time in a long time. Naruto remembered how they had sparred in the academy and his sister had always won. Now he was looking forward to crushing her and making his parents watch as their favorite child was destroyed. Begin. The proctor shouted. You should just give up. Naruko chuckled as they circled each other. Why would I do that? Naruto asked with a grin of his own. You don't stand a chance against me. I beg to differ. Naruto replied as he gripped the hilt of his sword. I could have killed you five different ways while we talked. This caused Naruko to frown as she stared at him waiting for him to draw and strike so she could counter it with the kunai defense her mother had taught her. But Naruto didn't do that. He flickered from sight as he appeared in front of her, his fist buried in her gut as he lifted her off the ground. Before she could recover he twisted and delivered a kick that sent her flying across the arena and smashing into one of the walls. Minato and Kashina were stunned at what had just happened. They knew that the shinobi was a strong competitor but they had up Naruko's training to handle this. Now here was this unknown shinobi that had sent the girl flying in the span of a heartbeat. What was most unnerving was that he now stared at them as if to say I hope you're watching. Naruto turned and saw that Naruko had gotten back up and was now sending a swarm of shuriken at him that he simply drew Aka Ripa and decided to show off a bit. Channeling his chakra down the blade an unearthly howl started to come from the blade and Kashina's eyes widened as she realized what he was doing. Girida Saishin Ken Greater Spirit Sword. Naruto roared as he swung the blade infused with all five chakra affinities at the swarm of weapons and a blast of pure destruction went off, destroying the weapons and smashing into the wall that Naruko had been near startling the spectators that had been watching. Naruko had been smart enough to move when she saw what he had just done and knew that she was at a disadvantage as long as he had that blade. What shocked her the most was the fact that he could do that technique. Her mother had told her about it, saying that it required a shinobi to have at least a minor affinity with each element to activate the Girida Saishin Ken and the strongest of affinities to use it like Yami just had. What's the matter? Scared Naruto shouted at his sister and saw her bristle as he only smiled. If you won't come to me, then I'll come to you. Naruto took off at a sprint that only a few of the Jonin could follow and they saw that he had Naruko at a complete disadvantage as he crossed the distance swinging the howling blade at his sister who tried to use two kunai to block the attack and disarm him, but she didn't realize her mistake until it was almost too late. The Girida Saishin Ken not only could create a blast of pure destruction it also enhanced the blade to the point it was next to unstoppable. The wind chakra would enhance the edge to cut through anything while the earth chakra would increase the density of the blade so it wouldn't be broken. The water and lightning chakras would mix to paralyze the target while the fire chakra would cauterize any wound, making it all the harder to heal. With this Naruto had Naruko at the perfect disadvantage with this weapon. As Akaripa hit the kunai there was a moment that the kunai held before the blade started to slice right through them, shocking Naruko who leapt away, just as the blade finished its arc and created a perfect slash into the ground. Too slow. Naruto chuckled as he swung in a sideways slash that forced Naruko to drop to the ground to avoid the blast of destruction. With this technique Naruto controlled his zone perfectly and could attack from afar, forcing Naruko to try and think of something but she quickly realized that as long as he used this technique she couldn't win. Naruto only smiled as he stopped channeling chakra into his blade and sheathed it before walking slowly towards Naruko who looked confused. I vowed to myself when I found out that I was facing you first. 
that I would destroy you in every sense of the word. I have just proved my superiority in both ninjutsu and kenjutsu in that one moment. And I should warn you, while I can't make a genjutsu that wouldn't trap everyone in this arena with you, I am immune to them myself. That only leave Taijutsu. Naruto chuckled as Naruko glared at him before charging in, trying to find his opening. Naruto only blocked her strikes as if they were merely flies buzzing around him. It didn't take long for him to start to press the attack and push Naruko back before he began his brutal assault on the girl. It started with dodging her left hook and going under her arm and delivering three rapid punches to her ribs. As she twisted in pain to grab that side he struck with a rising kick that caught her chin sending her flying straight up as he jumped up after her, delivering another set of punches to her unprotected stomach and then delivering a flip kick to knock her back down to the ground. Once they were on the ground and Naruko stood shakily Naruto moved into her gaps and pressed the advantage, beating her until she was a bloody wreck. Once she collapsed on the ground Naruto stopped before turning and walking away knowing that the proctor would likely call the match in his favor. What he didn't expect was to feel her gather chakra and he turned to see her about to hit him with a Rasengan. Twisting and crouching he dodged the attack before rising up, grabbing the arm that had the Rasengan at the wrist and elbow, then brought up his knee and broke her arm with a sickening crunch. You're finished, Naruto said as he saw that she had another Rasengan ready in her other hand and was going to try and hit him with that one as well. Naruto turned keeping a grip on her right arm's wrist before taking her back, and grabbing her other arm before sweeping her legs out from under her, forcing her to her knees. Placing a foot on her back as he pulled her arms behind her he shouted, Call the match or I will rip her arms off. He roared. The proctor blinked at the threat but realized that Yami would follow through. Winner Yami. He shouted as the red-eyed blonde simply kicked Naruko down into the dirt before walking off towards the viewing box. Naruko. Kashino whispered in shock at what had happened to her daughter. That was horrible. Minato sighed I should have known he would have done something like this. It could have been worse. Kazikage noted I read the details details of the preliminaries, and he could have killed your daughter easily enough. True. Minato nodded. It wasn't long before Hinata and Neji walked down into the arena and faced each other, Neji slightly worried about the change in Hinata. Hinata on the other hand was showing pure confidence, knowing that she couldn't fail if she wanted to get stronger and prove herself to both Yami and herself. The proctor started the match and Neji was about to verbally berate Hinata but she had charged him before he could begin and made several strikes on him that shocked him. Leaping back he glared at Hinata who smirked and decided to play mind games herself. Odd, she stated as Neji frowned you once asked me while we sparred why I move away. Should I ask you the same thing? Why did you flee just there? Rage was clearly evident on Neji's face and he charged in aiming to strike her with a jukin but Hinata flowed like water, remembering the downpour she had fought Yami in and brought those movements to her battle here, weaving through the attacks and dodging them by the smallest of margins while sending her own attacks into the gaps, striking various points but unable to strike the points that she really wanted to strike, his arms. After a few moments of the back and forth that they had just done they both moved back a bit to breathe. You are still a failure. Neji spat so you managed to make some small strikes on me. It won't change anything. Won't it? Hinata asked not so long ago I couldn't even strike you. Now I have managed to hit you ten times and you have yet to strike me. Neji's rage skyrocketed at this statement and with a roar of anger he charged in again trying to silence this pest that thought she stood above him. Hinata simply let his rage get the better of him as she maintained her defense and let him break himself upon it. It took a few moments for Neji to finally calm down and realize that Hinata had already closed far too many tenketsu points for him to continue continue fighting like this. Moving back he shifted his stance and grinned wickedly at the girl. You're in my divinitation. He grinned. Hinata blinked in shock that he knew this technique and knew that she wouldn't be able to dodge it. The strikes were brutal and vicious but after the completion Hinata was on the ground and coughing up blood as all of her tenketsu points were closed. Standing up shakily she glared at Neji who felt that he now had the advantage. You're finished. I have closed all of your tenketsu points. There is no way you can use the gentle fist anymore. He boasted, just as Yanada entered his zone, her fist slugging him across the face and sending him sprawling onto the ground as the girl stood over him before placing a foot on his chest and slugging him again and again, keeping the barrage up until he was barely conscious and she moved back, thankful for the extra sparring sessions that Yami had given her. He had shown her how to fight without the gentle fist, 
saying that in the end she couldn't always rely on this style and having a different style under her belt would make her even stronger. Your arrogance will be your downfall Neji Nisan. Hinata spat as she kicked him across the field, letting him try and stand despite the concussion he now had along with the broken nose and swelling eye. Pathetic can't even beat me without fighting like some gutter wench. He spat literally spitting out a glob of blood. And yet you are the one losing here. Hinata replied with a smirk as Neji prepared to kill this insufferable brat. As he charged in again Hinata flowed with a strike, sweeping his legs out from under him as she brought up her leg and kicked in his falling midsection before using a double hammer fist to smash into his back that was held up by her knee, letting them hear the audible crack as she damaged his spine. Moving away Hinata looked at the proctor who soon called the match in her favor as she looked at her father who had a displeased look on his face. She then turned her gaze towards Yami who nodded at her with a small grin on his face that showed that she had managed to prove to him that she had potential. Once the medics had taken Neji from the battlefield the proctor called for Shino and Kankuro to come down. But the puppet user shouted that he forfeited. Frowning the proctor called down Gara and Sasuke, with the two both entering the arena. Sasuke had trained till he vomited blood this past month to make sure that he could defeat Gara. Also he could have a chance to face the true challenge of this day. Yami, begin. The proctor called as Sasuke sent a few shuriken towards Gara who let his sand intercept them before he did something shocking and had the sand rise up and turn into a copy of him before throwing the shuriken back at Sasuke who dodged the weapons with ease as he had his shuriken activated and prepared to take down this threat. Charging in he shocked Gara by being just as fast as Lee was and slipping by the sand shield managing to deliver a few kicks to the team that shocked him before he sent waves of sand as Sasuke forcing the team back as he glared at the Tsunanin. Gara soon had a grin stretching his face as the sand wrapped around him, creating a dome with an eye appearing over it to watch what was happening outside. Sasuke frowned as he charged in and tried to punch through the barrier but found that not only was it stronger than he thought, it also sent out massive spikes toward anyone that tried to attack it. Sasuke had barely managed to dodge the spikes and he cursed as he realized that he was going to have to reveal his ace in the hole if he wanted to get past this fight. Moving back he flashed through a few hand signs before holding the finish technique. Chidori. He shouted as he ran towards the barrier, his sharingan letting him avoid the spikes as they came out and he stabbed the barrier, punching through it and leaping back as a monstrous arm shout out after him. Shocking him with that as he saw some kind of rippling inside the sphere. This is blood. My blood. Gara shrieked as the dome dropped and he was holding his wounded shoulder. Naruto smirked at this and looked up to see that a flare had gone up and Timari and Kankuro had gone down to collect their brother before more damage could be done against him. Naruto started to laugh as the invasion began and he could begin following his true orders. Chapter 5 Darkness Approaches Minato muttered a curse for not suspecting Orokimaru replacing the Kazikage. And he was now on the roof with Orokimaru holding Kashina at the point of a kunai as his two guards became four and created a powerful barrier that held back the ANBU unit and protected them from Minato and Kashina. I must admit that this went far smoother than I thought. Orokimaru chuckled as he pushed Kashina to Minato and stood there grinning. It won't go as smoothly as you think. Minato remarked as he pointed to the toads dealing with his snake summons. Orokimaru glanced and frowned before focusing entirely on Minato and his wife. It doesn't matter. If Jiria manages to stop them, there is no one that can save you, especially since you can't hire Ishin out of this barrier. Orokimaru replied as he placed his hands on the ground and three coffins rose up, marked one, two, and three. Now let's see how you fare against your predecessors. Without a word the three coffins opened, revealing the bodies of the Shodao. Midame and Sandame Hukages. As they stepped out the first two Hukages simply dissipated and Orokimaru blinked at this in shock. Looks like it didn't go quite as well as you thought. Kashina chuckled one Ito Tensei against the two of us is simple enough. Orokimaru mentally panicked at this, not knowing what had gone wrong with the ones he had put Dosu and Kin in. Shaking away those thoughts he looked at his former Sensei and saw that he was looking at Minato with sadness. I'm sorry Minato. It looks like I will have to fight against you today. Sarutobi apologized. It's alright Sarutobi. Minato nodded I'll be sure to make this quick. It won't matter if you do. The village is doomed. Orokimaru remarked besides you couldn't even keep your family together. 
What chance do you have of keeping this village safe? Shut your mouth, Kashina shouted. What is he talking about? Sarutobi asked as he looked at Minato and Kashina and saw the pain and anguish there. Oh, this is amusing. The legendary Yodame Hukage neglected his son in favor of his Jinchuruki daughter. Orokimaru laughed. The boy ran away after stealing their most precious items. A boy after my own heart. Is this true? Sarutobi asked as he looked intently at the two and saw the guilt. Why Minato? Why? I made a mistake. Minato sighed I have searched for him for the last 10 years but I can't find him. Because he went where you could not follow. Orokimaru laughed and he is hellbent on getting revenge. You lie. Kashina shouted. Do I? I have seen the boy. And I must admit that he has become a force to be reckoned with. Orokimaru explained he's a powerful shinobi now. One that would have turned the tides of this invasion in your favor if you had been smart enough to pay attention to him. Minato. Sarutobi began. I know. Minato stated as he looked at Orokimaru. Where is he? Last time I saw him was a name. Orokimaru replied and he had such eyes filled with hate and anger that I couldn't resist helping him. And who knows? He might make for a promising vessel one day. So he's not with you? Kashina asked. No. Unfortunately not. He enjoys independence. Orokimaru replied but he would gladly help me if I asked. Since I helped him get so strong. Kashina looked at Minato and could see that he was furious. But keeping a calm face to hide it. Without a word he sent a kunai flying at Orokimaru who dodged it with ease and threw one with a seal into the back of Sarutobi's head. Activating the full transformation into an unstoppable killing machine. Minato only cursed as he unsealed the katana for Kashina and then warped to the kunai that was behind Orokimaru. Running at the traitor who only laughed as he dodged the attacks while Kashina fought off Sarutobi who had summoned his legendary partner Enma and turned him into a staff. Pushing back Kashina who was using just a regular katana. The two fights raged. Going back and forth before Minato stopped fighting Orokimaru and sent a kunai into the back of the distracted Sarutobi which he hired to and rammed a Rasengan into his head, stopping him while he nodded for Kashina to protect him while he performed the sealing. It didn't take long for him to place the appropriate seal onto his predecessor and soon had him sealed into a tight bundle that only he could unlock as he faced Orokimaru who had drawn Kusanagi and was keeping Kashina at bay with ease. Minato took this moment to examine the village and spotted the enemy in the stands with the various shinobi that hadn't been caught in the genjutsu. The villagers were being evacuated quickly, with the genin and chunin covering them while the jonin fought off the enemy that were trying to follow after them. The clan heads were in peak form as they fought off the enemy as well and he could see Jiraiya on one of his toads as he fought off the multiple snake summons. Nodding his head he stopped when he saw a giant tanuki in the forest and realized that it was Gara and he had transformed. Shaking his head at the worried thoughts that had crossed his mind he refocused on Orokimaru and knew that to get out he would have to deal with this madman. In the forest Naruto watched in amusement as Sasuke had pursued Gar and his siblings and another team of Genin had followed after. Sakura, Shikamaru and Shina were hot on the Avengers' tail, with Shikamaru dropping back to deal with a platoon of Odo Shinobi that were chasing after them, then Shino stopping to deal with Kankura who was trying to attack them. Finally Sakura caught up to Sasuke who had come face to face with Gara and Timari. Timari looked worried as Gara started to transform and had the bright idea to get out of his way as she leapt away. Sakura realized that she should follow the other girl's lead and moved out of the way as Sasuke and Gara faced each other. The battle was fast and Naruto already knew the winner before the first blow had hit. Sasuke had started with a fire jutsu and Gara. In his transformed state used his baju arm to block the strike and then sent a barrage of sand shurikens at Sasuke who dodged them and then attacked again. The back and forth went for a few minutes before Sasuke struck with his Chidori and managed to wound Gara again, but in his maddened state he barely noticed as he smashed Sasuke into a tree with his transformed arm. Naruto only sighed as he leapt down and cut Gara off before he could finish Sasuke off. Sorry. But I can't let you kill him. Naruto stated as he eyed the mad Jinchuruki and only smirked as he decided that leaving him alive to be of use later would be much more beneficial than killing him here and now. You, mother wants your blood. He shouted as his arm shot towards him and Naruto smirked as he flipped over it and drew his sword, slicing through the appendage with ease. Shocking Gara who howled in pain as he reattached the arm. As he reattached the arm he started to transform even more. And soon all that was left of his normal self was his legs. You've gone quite insane it seems. Naruto noted as he dodged around Gar's arms and tail but then again, having a demon that doesn't let you sleep can do that to you. Shut up. Gara shouted as he struck out again. Why? 
Am I touching a nerve? Naruto asked as he bounced off a tree that was soon destroyed by the rampaging demon you see in the end you can't beat me, because I have put much more into getting stronger than you. You rely on the demon instead of putting it in its place. Silence. Gara screamed as he struck again. You're only mad because I'm telling you the truth. What's the matter? Too weak to even suppress a single demon. You'll never be strong if you don't learn to control that massive power of yours. Naruto continued as he weaved around the attacks. Already seeing his weak point but enjoying tormenting the young man. Die. Gara roared as he struck with all three of his limbs, making it very dangerous for Naruto to dodge without getting hit. Naruto simply smirked as he did the one thing that Gara hadn't expected and charged him, getting right in his face as he wrapped his hand in lightning chakra and smashed it into his face, jolting him and sending him skidding back as Naruto flickered from sight and took his back before his tail could retract and placed a seal on the bottom side of the tail. Leaping higher up Naruto saw the limbs retract and made a single seal before smirking as the explosive tag went off and destroyed the sand body that Gara had been building. You have much potential Gara no Subaku, but until you master that demon's powers you will never best me. Naruto stated as Gara gave him a death glare before making a seal and all the sand wrapped around him and soon he was growing to a massive height and Naruto realized that he was transforming into his full Baju form. Grinning Naruto leapt back from the giant foot as he created a clone to get Sasuke out of the line of fire as he started flashing through the hand signs for the jutsu that Kakuza had shown him to use against Baju like this. Futon. Arashi Shin no Ken Fist of the Storm God. Naruto roared as he finished the jutsu and felt the drain on his chakra, nearly taking everything that he had as the weather started to change and a funnel cloud started to form over Gara before a blast of pure wind and destruction smashed down into the unsuspecting Jinchuruki, smashing him into the ground and kept putting more pressure until Gara was almost unconscious and the sand had completely dissipated. Naruto chuckled as he swallowed a soldier pill to keep up his strength as he leapt down to Gara and walked over to the red-haired boy who was barely alive. Let the show you Gara no Subaku. You have much to learn and greater heights to reach. Naruto stated as he looked at the teen who stared at him with something akin to fear. Learn to master your demon and come find me then. I will help you reach the greatness that you so deserve. W.H. Who are you? Gara gasped. Naruto leaned down and whispered in Gara's ear I am Naruto Uzumaki Namakaze the prodigal son of the Yodame Hukage, and I will bring this world to a new age. Smirking as he stood up and walked away he saw Sasuke near the edge of the blast zone and staring at him. You are no genin, Sasuke stated. I'm not. Naruto nodded I was hired to keep you safe. By who? Orokimaru. I owed him a favor and he wanted me in this exam to make sure that you didn't bite off more than you could chew. Naruto shrugged. And how will he take you betraying him like that? Not well. But he can't do jack shit about it. I am just as strong as he is. And he well knows it. Naruto replied with a sadistic grin and as for you my young Uchiha, you still have a lot of growing to do if you want to kill Itachi. How do you know my brother? Sasuke snapped as he tried to stand but found it impossible at this time. I met him during my travels. I have seen his strength. And you are far from his level. Allow me to give you some advice. The village fears that cursed seal upon your neck. As well they should. While it does leech your chakra it is also capable of making you far stronger than you normally would be, as I am sure that you have noticed. Learn how to utilize this power and you will grow even stronger. But Kakashi Sensei said that if I grow dependent on it I would fail. Sasuke noted, only if you just use the cursed seal. There is a balance that must be reached if you want to use its power with minimal drawbacks. Learn that balance and I am sure that you could grow even more powerful than you could even imagine. Naruto grinned. And how would you know? Sasuke asked. Because Orokimaru's experiments have helped me grow as well. I let him experiment on me when I was a child and it allowed me to unlock my latent potential. That is one of the reasons as to why I am so much stronger than you. And the other reasons? Sasuke snipped. I have trained until I couldn't even move for 10 years, plus plenty of experiments were conducted on me. I am not foolish enough to say that I am the strongest shinobi in the world, but I am one of the most deadly shinobi to be born in a very long time. Naruto chuckled as he started to walk away grow stronger Sasuke Uchiha. Grow stronger and I may come find you again one day to have you stand beside me as I change this world to fit my image. And I promise you that if you do, I will help you kill your brother and help you learn the truth behind the Uchiha massacre. What? Sasuke shouted as he turned to look at the blonde but he was gone, 
without a single trace to show where he had gone. On top of the cage viewing box Orkimaru realized that his plan had been foiled and that Naruto had betrayed him. No one else could have used an S rank jutsu like that without any preparation. Now he was trapped fighting against another cage level shinobi and his wife who was almost as strong. Leaping away he created several dozen Tsuchibunshin as he had his bodyguards drop the barrier as they fled, letting the clones distract the shinobi as they quickly escaped the village giving the order to retreat. Minato frowned at how Orkimaru had retreated and saw that the enemy Jinchuruki had been dealt with. Sighing Minato let his gaze wander the village and saw that for the most part the enemy was falling back. Lord Huckage, an ANBU agent said as he approached from the other side of the viewing box the enemy is falling back, and somehow Gara no Subaku has been defeated. Do we know who did it? Minato asked. No. We had reports the Sasuke Uchiha pursued him and his siblings out into the forest and Kakashi had Shikamaru Nara, Shino Aburam and Sakura Haruno pursue him. We have sent ANBU to pick them up and so far we have found Shikamaru and his sensei Asuma Sarutobi with several captured Odonin, and Shibi Aburam has found a son and is treating the poison that he had been exposed to. The ANBU agent explained, I see, what of Yami? I don't see him amongst the fighting, Minato noted. He seems to have disappeared sir, was the answer and Minato had a bad taste in his mouth about this entire situation. Shaking his head he soon made his way towards the various areas that still had enemy shinobi fighting and aided in their defeat. By the end of the day Kanaha had lost several dozen shinobi and a handful of civilians that hadn't managed to get to the shelters in time. Suna had lost nearly half of their invading force and were suing for peace saying that Orkimaru had killed the real Yodi and Kazikijin had taken his place to make them go to war. Gara and his siblings had managed to escape back to the village where the red-headed Jinchuruki was now working on subduing Shukaku, something that none of his predecessors had ever attempted. Odo had lost two-thirds of their shinobi, with most dead but plenty captured to be interrogated. And Naruto now stood atop the Hukage monument again as he watched the sun set and decided that it was time to begin his plan. He now had followers that would obey him and he had placed the seeds of darkness into Hinata, Sasuke and Gara, and with Gara would likely come his siblings. Things were starting to unfold just the way he wanted. With the setting sun comes the end of an age. Naruto mused as he walked away. Heading for aim and with the end of an age shall come a much darker night. Chapter 6 The Beginning of an Empire Naruto returned to aim in an unusually good mood. As he entered the country he spotted Kanan waiting for him, and with her was the Deva Bonnie. Kanan Sensei, Nagato Sensei. Naruto nodded as he walked over to them. We received word about what occurred during the Chunin exams. Kanan smiled we heard you managed to defeat the Ishibi. Yeah. But it was almost too much. I showed off too much against Naruko. He noted. You learn from your mistake. Nagata replied that is all that matters. Naruto nodded before asking where's Tobi? Where he usually is. Kanan replied as Naruto nodded before heading into the village. For the rest of the day Naruto relaxed and the next day he went to find his friend. It took him a while to navigate the hidden tunnels under Aim but he did manage to finally find Tobi sitting at a desk as he went over his plans. Toby, Naruto said as he walked into the room. Ah, Naruto-kun. Toby chuckled. I read the report about the Chunin exams. Well done indeed. I thought so too. Naruto nodded as he sat at the other chair next to the desk. So did you put your sister in her place? Oh yeah. Probably shattered her confidence too. Naruto grinned. Excellent. Toby laughed. So how are your plans coming? Naruto asked. Moving along nicely. We should be ready to start capturing the Jinchuruki in a few months. Toby explained and then we can cast the Genjutsu and end this farce we call reality. I see. Naruto nodded as he stood up and placed a hand on Toby's shoulder. I still owe you for getting me out of Kanaha. No you don't. Toby replied you paid that off by becoming so strong. Oh? Naruto asked as a smirk crept onto his face and the poison Kanai slipped into the hand he had removed from Toby's shoulder. Before the masked men could go intangible Naruto had stabbed him with it and Toby realized that Naruto had betrayed him. You. He began before the poison closed his airway. Me. Naruto nodded as he watched Toby collapse. You see I don't like your plan. A genjutsu reflected off of the moon. That is crazy. I prefer my plan. Plan. I intend to rule this world, and for that I can't have you getting in my way. But don't worry, I won't let all of you die. I'll take that Sharingan of yours that I have seen through that mask you wear. Leaning down he removed Toby's mask and stared into the eyes of the young man that had helped him so much. Reaching down Naruto pulled out his eye, 
before placing it into a jar that he had prepared for the situation. Standing up he looked at Toby with a smile as his only friend died right in front of him. Flashing through hand signs he set the body ablaze and then walked off, moving through the catacombs to the secret exit that Toby had shown him and out into the world. It took him a few hours before he reached the medic nin that he had hired to perform the surgery. Are you sure? The man asked again. If you ask me one more time I will kill you once this is done. Naruto growled. The man only nodded before removing Naruto's right eye and then implanting Toby's eye in its place. Once the surgery was done he let Naruto remove the bandage and the blonde blinked as he went to the mirror and saw that the first experiment had overridden the concept and Sharingan and turned his eyes to their usual black and red. Frowning he focused Chakra to his eye and saw the Sharingan appear and the frown disappeared. Now about my payment. The man began. Nodding Naruto turned and sent a kunai through his throat. There it is. Naruto nodded keep the change. With that taken care of Naruto returned to the Akatsuki base where he quickly made his way to Nagato's real body. Once he was in the room he walked over to the handicapped man and tapped a shoulder. Naruto. He exclaimed when he saw him. I came to tell you you that Toby is gone. Naruto stated as he looked at his sensei. Gone? Nagato asked with a frown. Yes. He intend to betray you. He didn't have the same goals as you did so I got rid of him. You go ahead and complete your plan. Naruto smiled. But how do you know for certain? Nagato asked. Toby couldn't keep secrets from me. Naruto shrugged. Now if you will excuse me. I'll be leaving as well. Where will you go? To build a place for myself. I have remained idle far too long. Naruto replied until we meet again Nagato Sensei. Naruto was soon on his way out of aim, heading to the safe house that he had built in High no Kuni, and where his followers would be waiting for him. He entered the base to find that the pair were hard at work to learn the jutsus that he had given them. Kin was working on various genjutsu along with sound and wind based ninjutsu. Her chakra wasn't very high but her control was perfect so she was able to handle up to be rank ninjutsu for the moment. Dosu had been given two new sound gauntlets and also what Naruto called a sonic dagger that would send waves of sound through his opponent when it would make contact with them dicerening them as well as being a weapon that would be next to impossible to dodge. As the blade was created entirely by sound alone, very similar to wind enhanced weaponry. How goes it? Naruto asked as he entered. We are doing well my lord. Dosu nodded. Yes, I have mastered three of the genjutsus that you left me as well as two of the wind ninjutsu and three of the sound. Kin added. Good. Naruto nodded I am going to be doing some research in the other room. In a few days we are going to begin executing my master plan. Yes sir. The pair nodded as they continued working. Naruto was soon engrossed in his work and nodded at what he was finding. There were plenty of nations that he could start his empire in, but one was sticking out to him. Nami no Kuni a small island nation that had fallen on hard times due to the tyrannical rule of Gato, an industrialist that had bought the daimyo of the country and was taxing the villagers to the point they were barely surviving. The reason that this one was sticking out was the fact that they had been turned down by Kanaha for help. Apparently an old bridge builder named Tazuna had gone to them to hire Shinobi, but only had enough for AC rank mission and lied about the difficulty. When the team had found out they had gone straight back and Nami no Kuni had been blacklisted and they refused to help the small nation. Naruto felt that it would be sweet irony if he took this nation as his first part of his kingdom, and nodded once he looked over the rest of the details. The next morning the three shinobi were heading for Nami no Kuni, with Naruto already planning on how to turn this nation to his own. He knew about the four shinobi that Gato had hired as his personal bodyguards, and he also knew about his army, but he wasn't too concerned about how dangerous they would be compared to him and his two servants. It was dusk when they finally arrived and Naruto had them camp in the woods for the night and the next day they would go and begin their rebellion. At dawn Naruto made his way to the home of the late Tazuna and knocked on the door. Tazuna had been killed after he had returned and refused to stop building the bridge, with a skeleton still hanging from the incompleted bridge. When the door opened there was a young woman standing there, looking at him with pure fear in her eyes. Yes, she asked. If I may, I would like to speak to you inside. Naruto stated calmly I promise you that I have nothing to do with Gato. This seemed to slightly calm the woman down and she let him inside where they were soon seated in the kitchen with her nursing a cup of tea while Naruto sat there. A few moments later a young man sat down with the woman, and Naruto realized that this was an Ari the grandson of Tazuna. I will be blunt. I am here to remove Gato from power. Naruto stated. As the pair's eyes shot wide open I know you may think that this is impossible, 
but I will have you know that I am as strong if not stronger than the huckage of Konohagakure. Did they send you? Inari spat. Hardly. I have no love for that village. I came here to remove a scumbag from power and set this nation free. What do you really want? Inari hissed. I know you aren't doing this because you're a good guy. There are no good guys. I can understand why you'd think that. And it is true that I want something. What I want is to unite the world under a single banner. And I will start that here. I will remove Gato and the corrupt Daimyo from power and in exchange I will rule this land. You will find my rule far less harsh than Gato's. Naruto replied. I doubt it. Inari spat. Well it is either the devil you know that is slowly killing you, or the devil you don't that is promising a better life. Plus the bridge being completed and revenge on Gato. Naruto smirked as he saw Inari perk up at that I will personally bring him to you to remove his head right on the completed bridge. That won't be possible. Gato will kill anyone that he sees going to work on the bridge. Tsunami warned. I and my two associates will deal with that. Naruto replied with a grin. So what do you say? The promise for freedom under my rule. And you get to complete the bridge that Tazuna started. Plus getting to kill Gato yourself. It is a very good deal. Tsunami and Inari traded looks. But they finally spoke. We aren't the only ones that you have to convince. We will have a town meeting. And you can make your offer there. If they accept then we will do as you ask. Deal. Naruto smiled as he stood up inform me of when and where this meeting will be and I will be there. With that he walked away and returned to camp. The next day Naruto found a notice about the town meeting posted and smiled as he saw that it was actually a clever ruse to make sure that unless you knew the cipher you wouldn't know where to go. Naruto however had seen such ciphers from Kakuzu and quickly cracked where it would be. That night Naruto arrived at the meeting point and again made his offer this time to the whole of Nami no Kuni. At first this was met with disdain but eventually someone asked the one question that Naruto had been waiting for. Why us? To put it simply, you are a nation that could use liberating. And because Kanaha turned you down, I want this place to become a thriving nation under my rule. To stick our nose up at the village that had refused to help you. Naruto explained with a grin. And how will you deal with Gato and the Daimyo's forces? Another man asked. With the point of my blade. Naruto replied with a smirk. I have a secure place to hold Gato until I can deliver him to Inari here to give the final blow. I can begin as soon as you agree. Or you can decline this last chance to free yourselves and I will leave. The villagers traded looks and finally they nodded their acceptance. Naruto soon left motioning for Dosu and Kin to emerge from the shadows. How tight is security on Gato's compound? He asked as they walked. Nothing we can't handle. The four shinobi don't stay in the compound. They're located in a treetop hut in the forest. Kin reported. Are any there at this time? Naruto continued. None. This time of night Gato relies on his thugs. Dosu replied. And the four shinobi, do we have names? Yes. The leader is one to be slightly concerned about. Zabuza Momoki. With him is a masked nin. Female from the looks of it, and the only brothers. Dosu explained. Anything else? Naruto asked. Only that they are unhappy with their current employment. Apparently Gato has been paying them less than what they have been getting. Kin added. I see. This works to our advantage. Naruto grinned. We strike tonight. Gato will be captured and his army killed. Leave no survivors. Yes sir. The pair nodded as they faded back into the shadows as Naruto made his way to the compound. The three arrived in total darkness slipping onto the walls and silently killing each of the guards as they went. It didn't take long before the entire exterior was filled with dead bodies, with not a single one having made a sound as they died. It was then that Naruto gave the word that the two were to go up to the roof and work from the top down while he entered through the first floor and worked his way up. The door opened noiselessly and Naruto was soon killing anyone that he came across, whether they be soldier or servant. If they weren't in chains they were killed like the rest. It took all of a half hour for him to kill everyone on the first floor and the basement before he reached the second floor and found Dosu and Kin waiting for him outside a door. Gato was in here. Dosu reported we already cleared the room. Good. Naruto nodded as he walked in and stood over the sleeping Gato, snapping him out of his sleep as he placed a foot on his throat. Good evening Piggy. I'm here to hold you until the slaughter. Before Gato could scream Naruto had his Sharingan activated and was dragging Gato into the Kamui dimension. Once this was finished Naruto nodded to the other two shinobi as he began searching the compound for all the valuables and taking a tally of all the money. 
food and other essentials that were inside this one place. Once he was done he told the two to stay here and he would go and deal with the shinobi. It was dawn when he managed to find the treetop cottage and when he got close he spotted the Oni brothers about to ambush him. I would advise against that if you want to live. He told them and saw them both blink and freeze at this. Not bad Gaki. Zabuza said from behind him now who are you and what do you want? My name is Naruto and I am the soon-to-be ruler of this nation. Naruto replied as he faced Zabuza, I have already killed all of Gato's men that were stationed at his compound and have hidden him in a place that only I am able to access. I intend to remove the daimyo from power as well and have the villagers complete the bridge. Now as for the reason that I am here, I want to hire you. Hire us. Zabuza chuckled. What makes you think that we would listen to you? You listen to that fat sack of crap. Naruto pointed out. He had money. And I now have all of his. Minus what will be returned to the villagers. Naruto countered. And if I decline, I kill you. Naruto stated calmly. You think you can? Zabuza growled. I spar on par with Kisame, and have managed to best him a handful of times. Naruto replied as he saw Zabuza's eyes widen. So you tell me if I won't be able to kill you. Okay. Zabuza nodded. What do you want us to do? I want you to go back into Mizu no Kuni. Search out the rebels that seek to overthrow the Yode Mizukage and inform them that I will help finance them. And if things look as bad as I think they do I will personally kill him. And what do you want in exchange? Zabuza asked. I will want the right to name the next Mizukage, and the entire loyalty of Kurigakir no Sado. Naruto stated with a cold grin. Zabuza blinked at this and realized that this blonde teen wanted more than to rule a small island. You're making a play for power. He stated, I am making an empire. Naruto corrected now the only question is will you be joining me in making it? Or will you just be another sacrifice to my plans? Zabuza started to sweat as he felt the pure KI coming off of the red eye Jinobi and knew that this kid would easily kill him and the others if they tried to oppose him. Fine. Zabuza nodded. Good. Naruto nodded. In turn I will of course be placing seals onto you that will kill you if you attempt to betray me. Fine. Zabuza nodded valuing his own life. Soon Naruto had the four standing at the cottage as he made the seal array on each of them. The Oni brothers were no problem as was Zabuza, but the last member of the group didn't want to remove their shirt. It is either you remove it or I will kill all four of you. Naruto replied coldly and saw that this seemed to have the desired effect on Haku who soon had their shirt off and Naruto nodded at the small bust that she had. It took all of a few minutes to get the seals in place and once this was done he activated them and gave them their orders. Again, Go to Mizu no Kuni, find the rebels and inform them that you have been sent by the new ruler of Nami no Kuni to offer assistance, Naruto told them. The four nodded and were soon on their way while Naruto made his way to Inari's home. Once he gave them the news they were ecstatic and Naruto told them that the stolen goods would be returned after he dealt with the daimyo. As Naruto walked through the village he could see the news reaching the people and there were cheers shouting for what he had done. It was noon when he reached the daimyo's palace and saw that what had remained of Gato's thugs had joined with the daimyo's guards. Let this be your only warning. Nordo shouted anyone that does not throw down their weapon and surrender will be killed. Daimyo, I will have your head for your corruption. When this was said he started towards the palace, greeted at first by jeers, but when they tried to shoot him down they found that their arrows passed right through him like he was a mirage. Once he reached the gates he drew his blade and cut the hinges off before pumping chakra into his leg and kicking the gate letting it fly down the path and smash the two guards at the doors, killing them before they even realized what had happened. As Naruto walked down the path the guards tried to overwhelm him, but his blade was too fast and they all died before they could reach him. Once all the guards outside were dead he went to the door and this time only kicked them open and saw the archers waiting for him. Fire! The commander shouted as they let loose the shafts. Naruto only smirked as he went intangible and walked right towards them, Stopping once they were out of arrows. My turn. Naruto grinned as he activated the Girida Saishin Ken and slashed through the archers, letting them all fall dead, or wishing that they were. Naruto walked with the howling blade through the palace, making his way ever closer to the daimyo and found more and more guards throwing themselves at him and him just leaving their dead bodies on the ground as he walked. It took almost 30 minutes but he finally found the ruler of the nation. He was huddled behind close to a dozen armed samurai that were ready for the blonde. Stop there. The leader shouted. No. Naruto replied as he sent the ranged attack at them, 
taking the heads off of all twelve as he walked towards the daimyo. He finally stopped in front of the cowering man who looked like he had already pissed himself. Please, I'll give you whatever you want. Just spare me, he pleaded. No, Naruto replied coldly as he stabbed the man through the throat and knelt down in front of him. Your nation is mine now. With those final words, Naruto pulled his blade out and sheathed it. He soon walked out of the room and began searching through the palace, finding the records room where the daimyo kept his taxes and the kickback that he had been getting from Gato. Naruto soon created several clones to go through this and once this was settled he made more to clear out the dead bodies while he walked back outside. Over the next week there was plenty of celebration over the complete turn that Nami no Kuni had taken. The people were thrilled that the new ruler had returned all of their stolen goods and had also allowed them to complete the bridge. All he had asked for in turn was that they only pay a monthly tax of one-sixth of their total earnings and that they each get a seal placed on them. None of them were quite sure what this was for but they trusted the new leader and what he had planned. On the day of that the bridge was completed Naruto arrived on the bridge, flanked by Dosu and Kin as he stopped in front of Inari, who had led the villagers in the completion of the bridge. As promised here is your vengeance. Naruto nodded as he opened the doorway to the dimension and Gato came falling out. A lot thinner but still alive. Naruto placed a foot on Gato's back and then handed Inari his katana. The young man held it and stared at his hated tormentor and in a roar of pure rage and anguish he swung the katana down, taking the former industrialist's head and letting it bounce on the bridge. Well done. Naruto nodded as he looked at the people. Now there is another reason why you are all here. That is to activate the seals. This was met with confused looks but as Naruto made a single hand sign all negative thoughts of him left their minds. He was their leader. What he said was law. And there was no way that they could disobey him. What did you do sir? Kin asked. The common people are nothing but fools and sheep. So I made them into real sheep. They will do what I command without a moment's hesitation. Watch. Inari. Go and slap your mother. Of course. Inari replied as if it was perfectly natural as he walked over to Tsunami and slapped her so hard that she fell to the ground. See. Naruto replied I will not tolerate dissension. They approve of me now. But eventually the people will turn against their rulers and hate and anger will take the place of the loyalty that they should show me. So I removed that entire possibility. Naruto laughed as he walked towards the palace. My people, go about your lives. If I have a need for you I will speak it. Yes Lord Naruto was the cry as the people dispersed and Naruto walked back to the palace where he would soon begin making more plans for a soon to be empire. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment. This is Chaos Shinobi signing off.